Hi there, hi there. I'm Rytro. This is submission for Doom Eternal. The category I'll be doing today is Nightmare 100% Base Campaign plus all DLC. So yeah, there's some details that go into that, but let's uh, let's just hit the start button. So of course, as you start into Doom Eternal, it's an FPS game, very high pace. It's like a puzzle shooter. Play 2016. It's really good. Basically, what we'll be doing this is trying to do high oh, FPS skills this whole time in order to complete the game. Do everything as fast as possible, as fast as we can. Hey, dude. So, as soon as we hear rip and tear, it's fine. It's till it's done. We can skip the cutscene and the game begins. To where, of course, we just start in the middle of action with a shotgun and a few zombies. So what's the category mean? Nightmare, it's the highest difficulty. Normally, we use run Ultra Nightmare. Ultra Nightmare is permadeath, which means you die once in the game and your run's over. We don't run that at marathons because that you can picture that's not very marathon safe if you have to just restart your run after two hours in. Uh, next thing, 100%. Every collectible, we have to grab. Every combat encounter, we have to do. Every challenge, we have to complete. DLC, it gets a bit wonky, but we'll get there when we get there. I just already did a few skips right there, but we, we'll, we'll pass that. That for now. Uh, grab the chainsaw, which basically I can chainsaw a demon in order to get some ammo back, because everyone knows that demons have blood that is ammo. And I did a trick called box skip, which abuses uh, hitboxes a little bit. We'll get into more of that, that general stuff in a sec. Uh, we're in the first combat arena to where we are using our weapon mod that we just picked up for the top man shotgun, Sticky Grenades, which basically turns the shotgun into a grenade launcher. And there is an imp hiding somewhere. Let's go. Love it when that happens. Okay. And also, our... I guess I should go over what Restricted Mean. Restricted Mean is practically like a no major glitches rule set. We just outlaws a few certain tricks that aren't allowed. For example, there's this uh, bug in the game called Slope Boosting. It boosts the patch 1.0. Basically, it lets you fly around like you're Superman, and it's banned because it would just trivialize most of the movement in the run. Stuff like that. Another thing is like getting despawning enemies to finish a combat encounter, also not allowed. So we have to do all the fighting ourselves. Okay, we just picked up the full auto mod which does a lot of damage very quickly. We'll be using that on a few heavies in this arena. However, it gets outclassed by a few other strategies in, in a bit. Okay. We we'll very quickly take everything down and finish on that arena. Got introduced the Arachnotron, which of course everyone hates. It's just an annoying enemy that fires at you from a distance. So we gotta close in the gap. Now, uh, a tech I'd like to bring up right now is bunny hopping. You may notice I am jumping up and down a bunch. Oh, sometimes a bit too well. And basically, like bunny hopping in most source games or even uh, some FPS titles, bunny hopping but right when you hit the ground will conserve your momentum. And in the Doom Eternal, it also gives you momentum. Now, how does it do that? I don't know. We, we all kind of just don't know. It's, um... It's basically, it's the more vertical speed you have, like, downward going into the ground, the more horizontal movement you'll have coming out of it. Okay, I'm gonna attempt a trick here called Yellow Keycard Skip. I failed that horribly, we're not gonna do that. I saw the light. Basically, I just barely missed the prop there and caused it to go, so I'm just gonna take the safe play. In the marathon, you bet I'm totally going for that, though. So you see here, we're just trying to take, like, little racing lines. And bam. To get down here to the Nux web bot, where we will take this for the heavy cannon, which we picked up earlier, get precision bolt. This turns into a sniper rifle. Sniper rifles are really good in this game because of something called quick swooping, which you'll see up there. Why am I leaving health on the ground? Because it's slow to pick it up. What are you talking about? <laughs> but yeah, uh, you can see here that we can uh, swap to the precision bolt very quickly, quick scope something, and then swap away, and that will remove its weapon cooldown. 
you'll be using this in order to fire like sniper shots quicker than we should be able to. So you see here how we kind of like dead swap, uh, up to precision bolt, swap to another weapon, swap back to the precision bolt, and we can immediately fire a sniper shot, basically circumventing the cooldown. We'll be using that a bunch, and turns out that swapping weapons uh, constantly in a fight gives you the most damage per second possible, so we will be doing that a lot. And that's why you won't see much of full auto anymore, because now we can have, now we can quick swap between several weapons. Okay, moving on, we are just, uh, fun to happen along here. Now, you may have noticed, uh, well, first some tentacles that we gotta shoot. So here's kind of what we did for box skip way early in the run. If we punch, basically, a punchable surface like that vent story there, we get pulled a little bit towards us. And so we use that speed there, for instance, the bunny hop to the rest of that secret. But we use the same concept to bunny hop, uh, to, um, punch the box and then immediately go to, uh, where we're supposed to, bypassing and moving it. Now these cacos here, you may have noticed, if you shoot them in the mouth with a grenade, they swallow it. And it puts them instantly into a stagger state, where we can glory kill them. Which is basically just these little melee finishers we have. Most of the time, we will not be glory killing because it's slow in comparison to shooting them. But for early game, these cacos die in like one sticky grenade to the mouth, so it's very ammo efficient and not that slower, because we just don't have enough damage yet. Once we get to, once we get more damaging guns, we'll probably not even bother glory killing cacos. So, this arena, we just gotta clear all these fodders, go over here. Now you may not notice this whole time, but I've conserved three chainsaw. If you have three chainsaw ticks, that allows you to chainsaw called the heavy demon, like these spiders here. Uh, normally, for a fodder demon, aka one of these weaker demons that you see me shooting left and right, uh, you only need one pip to uh, chainsaw. Conserving chainsaw is very important throughout this run, we will be using that at some point in order to get a free heavy kit. Okay. And with that, last arena, we're practically done with the first level, Hell on Earth. But not horribly, so we can be happy for that. We just gotta finish picking up a few collectibles, and then we are out. Oh, you may have seen also I picked up a grenade. Of course, a grenade, you fire it, it explodes. The cool thing about equipment in this game is that you can fire equipment while you are shooting. Meaning, that if you're swapping, or if you're just shooting, you don't have to stop shooting and fire it. So we'll be using that a bunch. Oop. We're picking up a flame belch. Now, the flame belch is a nice equipment they added to this game that basically just lights a demon on fire. And everyone knows that demons, when they're lit on fire, they will drop armor. Of course. And there we picked up a crystal, which basically upgrades our health, ammo, or, or armor. We pick up an armor upgrade because we are going to get, um, because we need, a uh, boot magnet, which is one of the upgrade trees that we just invested into. Now we're on to Exultia. Exultia. Oh, the real first level of the game. This is where it starts layering. Doom Eternal works in a way where it layers combat mechanics on top of each other, so each level gets slowly more and more complex. Also, nice B-hop chain there. So after a quick death warp to reposition ourselves in the arena, we kill these enemies, and everything here just as intended. Fun little note, on 1.1 you can actually get that Kako kills itself by moving into a death plane. Ah, grenade missed one of those zombies, I'm upset. But for my, for arbitrary rules of playing 100% plus DLCs, you have to play on a patch that can essentially run all the DLC. So therefore, we are playing base campaign on current patch. Moving along here, getting some nice B hops. We get introduced to runes, which are basically extra abilities we can pick up. Here, we're picking up air control. Because air control 
being able to maneuver yourself in the air well is really great for chaining B hops together and also for survivability because it just gives you greater control to dodge projectile. Okay. And we also picked up a blood punch, which is basically a charged melee attack that we get from doing glory kills and also from other methods we will get. This allows for combos, like that Hell Knight right there, which we are able to kill quite well. That Kako does not want to eat its veggies. So after moving on to this arena, blah 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 blah. Killing some more Kakos. We are actually going to do a full cool strat here, which we will kill some enemies before they essentially get within our spawn area by doing that quick little setup. Full autoing the Arachnotron, and bam! Normally there's two enemies that spawn by that gate, but by using those stickies there, we kill them before they eventually get in our line of vision. So it's fast. You see here, I'm doing a lot of precise B-hop movement in order to um, make sure to build as much speed as we can. Also, if you just spam jumps on these walls, you can climb them. Really cool. So if you just go here. Bam, and you can also punch those little chain links from the other side. Here we're picking up our bread and butter for the whole run. Uh, dash. Which just gives you shoot two short dashes that you can do that really elevate the movement in this game. So we will be using that in conglomeration with a bunch of other things in order to stay alive and also move quickly. Now, quick thing to note, B hopping is faster than dashing, so I will try to be B hopping everywhere rather than dashing, although I will dash if B hopping is slow. The rule of thumb is that if you have to, if, if it would take three dashes to get somewhere or more, it's probably faster to be hop. Also, I guess while I'm here talk, well, get to that in a sec. We're at secret encounters. Secret encounters are basically little optional encounters. And since this is 100%, we will have to do all of them. Here we do a death warp to teleport right before these Kakos, Omoira Shinderu, Nani, and they're dead after feeding them their veggies. Now, in terms of bunny hopping, it's pretty hard to bunny hop just by hitting spacebar. So we bind, jump to scroll, and we uh, use that to do. Here we are going to upgrade some of our attachments. We are upgrading sticky bombs because having a nicer, having a higher explosion radius is really good for clearing fodder. So we will do that. It'll lead to a bunch of time save throughout the run. Here. One thing to note, uh, we as a community realize that this game has a distinct advantage that if you use a free scrolling mouse over a regular mouse, so therefore some of the people in the community made a macro which emulates basically like a free scroll. A free scroll is... A free scroll mouse is basically once you spin uh, the mouse wheel it won't stop spinning. So an Oh, we added this macro just as kind of like a safety clause so that you don't have to um, don't have to go out and buy a free scroll mouse in order to be on the same playing wheel as someone who playing level as somebody with one. Here we just picked up Heat Blast for our Plasma Rifle. The Plasma Rifle isn't that good. Uh, we will, as soon as we get the other weapon that shares ammo type with it, we will most, almost exclusively use that. But it has its uses. Because in the early game, just having three ammo sources is really good. It means you don't have to chainsaw as much. Here, Heat Blast, we charge up some charges in order to uh, use Heat Blast. Which basically, each three of these dots, the more dots are filled, the more damage Heat Blast will do. And we want to make sure to be uh, really good with Heat Blast for a trick coming up here, which I call Heat Blast Go Burr. Which I'll just let it speak for itself and then I'll explain it after. So after killing this Revenant, you'll be firing the Heat Blast a few times. Ah, that was a bad one. Did not get the full length of that, but basically what it happens there is Heat Blast. If we swap weapons while firing Heat Blast... Oh, getting a bit spicy for a second. The game will confuse its alternate fire for the Heat Blast, aka the, bla the Heat Blast. I was explaining stuff. How dare it. 
will confuse its alternate fire for its primary fire. So we will get basically charged heat blasts for um, at the rate of regular primary fire. Koma, I'm trying to make a video here and you come in with that. Yes, uh, everyone is bad at this game, also known. Where is this last one? There you are. There's another one. There's always another one. So after doing a few B-hop chains here, we will jump on some collision in order to skip a platforming section, grab this battery a bit early. If I can get this prop jump, can't get a prop jump, we will use a dash boost. Now those were a bunch of terms. Prop jumps are basically if you jump into a prop, you can essentially double jump without using your double jump, giving you yourself increased height. Right there is an example of a dash boost, which is if we just dash into some angled collision, we will gain our dash momentum will basically turn into vertical momentum and we'll get like super high. You know, which is great. We we like getting high fast. We're speedrunners. Don't take that out of context, please. Okay. We'll use our newfound heat blast as well as everything to clear this arena pretty easily. Which, I guess, getting into this, arenas are primarily uh, designated by trigger demons. Which basically means we only have to kill a few specific demons to progress the encounter. Like for this one, it's pretty simple because there is literally only uh, three demons here to kill. There are just these zombies and this arachnotron. So kill everything, you've progressed. Now, moving on. So, but it's not always the same for each combat arena. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we picked up this battery. We're going to plug in another battery to open up a new pathway. Can we go back and watch the cutscene so that we can better understand the story? Here, I'll explain the story to you. There are these three demon priest boards. Something, something, dag, rub, blah, blah, blah. whatever. They are basically controlling the story of the invasion of the hell. Uh, they are basically, you know, leading the invasion of hell on earth. So, of course, we need to uh, defeat them. Because, of course, we do. We need to save earth. So, we have to kill each priest and their guardians and uh, basically save earth that way. That's what we're doing here. After some movement and some dash boosts on totally intended grounds, we get the Slayer Key. So, there we go. We just gotta kill these priests. Now, this is the optional encounter known as the Slayer Gate. Slayer Gates are super tough combat arenas that are completely optional, but this is 100%, so we have to do them. I'm gonna hope I get a trick here called Slayer Gate Skip, which basically relies on me killing things fast. So, just enjoy the combat for a second as I focus. like we're not getting it. Player gate skip is something that can happen if no, if, if basically if every enemy on the arena is dead, the gate will just finish prematurely because the clear condition for the gate is every enemy is dead. But if you kill every enemy before the next wave spawns, you can just um, end it early. Unfortunate. Let's see if we can get another uh, blast on this thing. Ah, uh, oof, not good enough. Yeah, the heat blast tech can be a bit weird. Oh, have it. Oh, there you are. No, that's not a bad Slayer Gate considering. How do dash boosts work again? I'll explain when we get to the next dash boost again, Samurai. By the way, welcome in. So after a B-hop chain over here, We'll grab this extra life because, of course, we'll need it. After grabbing a secret, we'll do a dash boost, which basically just converts the dash speed into a into a vertical speed. So we just dash into a sloped surface. 
It basically is like, oh man, you hit you hit a sloped surface. Angle of incidence equals angle reflection. Some other physics stuff, and then bam, you're sent upwards. They're gonna try getting a good B hop. Oh, it's pretty good B hop. And we skip a bunch of parkour. Here we're going to pick up the quad damage, which does exactly what it says. We could deal four times the damage. So we will try to use this as much as we can in order to uh, kill things fast and effectively. And that's basically the encounter right there. You just have to clear some fodder and we're dead. So if proper use of if you have power-ups, proper use of them can get you to clear encounters very quickly. And then we take the portal and we're out of here. Woohoo. And now we are just back into the Fortress of Doom, which is kind of like our home base. We use this basically to plug in these batteries here and we get upgrades. Pretty cool. Here we're picking up another major part of our kit, the Ice Bomb. Ice Bomb freezes enemy in their place. It's very useful for if you have a dangerous enemy. You can just throw it at them and then they can't do anything because they're frozen. Ooh. And of course we have elevator sections. We all love elevator sections. You may notice in downtime I'm also charging blast just to use later. We'll do that a bunch in the next few levels, but not when we pick up uh, the ballista, which is the other gun that shares ammo with the plasma rifle. Alright, we're going into the Ripatorium, which is basically like the practice range equivalent in this game. Except we don't need to do much practice. So we just have to, you're just required to do it once, and then you can leave and never visit it again. So we stay in approximately this area because we have the best sight lines at all the demon spawn locations. Basically, this just leads to more consistent times. After we get out here, we bunny hop in order to get to the ghost of a Praetor. It will give us this token, which will allow us to upgrade our suit once we get enough of them. After some more bee hopping out of here, we are ready to do the next level. So this level is now a very cool one, cultist base. Every Everybody has have ca everybody who runs UN has countless that level because it's like the first real challenge, uh, where we just um, basically just put everything to the test. Gonna be trying doing something here called Milk Strat. Oh, we get it. It's called Milk Strat because we bounce off a bone. Yep, we thought this one through. So we have to do challenges for this arena. Uh, we just did a, completed a challenge for Cultist Base, which is just challenges were introduced in this level. And that was Ignite uh, Four Demons on Fire, which we do that immediately because there's demons right there. So now after I press on this button, I will upgrade Suit with Upgrade Hot Swapper. This basically leads us to uh, swap between our weapons and also our weapon mods faster. We need this because fasting will... Swapping weapons will increase our damage because we'll just constantly swap between everything. So now that we, up, we are over here, we're introduced to the Mancubus. Also, fun thing, during glory kill animations, you are immune to damage. So we abuse that to just waiting for the Mancubus to get into a trap so that we can then kill it easily. Later. We're doing the same thing here. We're luring this Mancubus to this trap. That is just an easy kill. It doesn't matter how fast you go in this arena as long as you're fast enough because the door does not program to open after a set time. Well, until a set time after the Mancubus spawn. 
here. We're going to be doing a precise jump up here. Killing these enemies early. Not precise enough as this Arachnatron really just didn't like us. So the, we completed the second challenge, which was destroying an Arachnatron. This is good. Completing a challenge gives you a Praetor token, which we used to upgrade our suit, which we really like having as soon as possible. Here is a totally not scary hallway that we are just going to completely ignore. Then after doing some precise speed hop chains, please. And looks like this will work. If I wasn't an idiot and didn't recharge my dashes. It's, we would have had it, people, and that's just as nice. Going to pick up this armor here just for safety. Basically, you would skip that jump pad if you did everything effectively. Here, we pick up the rocket launcher, which you will see how effective quick swapping is now that we can have a few high damaging weapons like the precision bolt and the rocket launcher. Oh, you're not dead. How rude. I could just make me lose a second or two. Really, how inconsiderate. And now that we finish this arena, we do a dash boost to get up faster than the intended path, where we're going to pick up our second rune, which is called Blood Fuel. Blood Fuel is a cool little thing where after we glory kill or after we chainsaw, after we do basically any animation that involves killing an enemy, we get a small speed boost, which is really helpful because speed equals good, right? So now after we get introduced to our favorite enemy, the Whiplash, which are these snakes people, we're just going to try bursting them down as fast as we can with uh, rocket launcher and PP shots. One thing to note here, uh, with every enemy, we have pretty much a few ways that we know of killing them quickly. And basically, we use the ammo slash weapons we have at the time in order to uh, kill them efficiently. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Every time you see me take, take out an enemy, it's almost always planned. So we just picked up Lock-On for the rocket launcher. Lock-On is important because it fires three rockets at an enemy that hone in on it. So it does a lot of damage, so we're going to keep that. Uh, probably the best... Dash boost, please. Got the dash boost, let's go. Hardest dash boost in the game, I swear. You'll see the power of that here. So, you wait for these things to spawn in. Mancubus and a few soldiers. Get Chainsaw, because we want as much rockets as possible for this section. Rocket Kako. This Revenant will spawn right over here. Then the Arachnatron over here. Just in time for a Whiplash spawn, where we will headshot it with a few stickies, killing it instantly. Uh, there's going to be Hell Knight right over here. We'll use the Heat Blast that we charge to kill soldiers pretty quickly. Chainsaw again for more rockets. And there we go. Oh. He lived somehow. That's strange. And now I dash into this cutscene, which gives us a little trick called Cut Speed. Yes, yes, it's a great name. I love that name. Cut Speed is amazing. Cut speed is basically when you enter a cutscene, the game gives you the speed you have after the cutscene to make it seem fluent. However, if you're mid-dash, you are at dash speed. So, because the game, because you never played end of the dash, where you slow down, you keep the dash speed you have mid-dash after the cutscene, and you're able to go pretty damn fast. Cool. Here we got some cultists, worshipping, they're glorified zombies. Now here we're going into an arena called the Pit. Everyone loves the Pit. It is great. This is probably, for new runners, one of the hardest arenas. Because it's very closed in. If you get near the walls, they damage you. Yeah. And whatnot. So after coming down here, have these mechas just waiting for us. And we have these cue balls here. Cue balls are kind of exactly like how they are in pool. Which, if you use them, 
uh, they will launch themselves into an enemy, basically dealing a lot of damage. It will kill most enemies in one shot. Oh. This jerk didn't want to... Didn't want to get hit by a cue ball. It's fine. We can just take him out regularly. Hey, Chris. How you doing? And we will use these cue balls to kill these mancubuses. Quite. Mancubi? Mancubi. Mancubuses. Make sure a bunch of mancubut. Mancubit. Mancubi in a, in a bus. Okay. After we are done with that, we will ignore the walls because he hopping's faster than just jumping off the wall. And we will go grab this last sentinel crystal for this arena here. Now, one of the challenges was grabbing the sentinel crystal, so we will immediately upgrade faster dasher, which just gets us our dashes recharged quicker, which is pretty good for speedrunning. As you know, dashes are fast. Oh, this guy didn't die from that. Cool. We're cool. Yeah, what's up, Grenade? So, yeah, we are just... Now, Cultist Base is hated for a few reasons. One of the few reasons is that... It's a, it's a spiraling level with many layers to it and very complicated stuff. So, just navigating it takes a while. So... Every speedrunner hates it because it's just a super long split where it feels like you're not doing anything. Thought bunny hopping was faster, but bunny hopping is tech is faster, Samurai, if the place you need to get to is about three dashes away or more. Otherwise, it's faster to faster to dash. So we take get it for those scenarios also. Just having it recharge is nice for aerial movement. Okay, now we are you doing the most gimmicky section where Doom Eternal's like, hey, hey, you should try out battle mode, which is basically the multiplayer where you can play as demons. So they make you play as a demon for a little bit. In this section, I think it's quite impossible to die if you are anyway familiar with any coordination skill. Just because they give you so much health. It's just a boring part of the run. You just gotta wait for demons to spawn and then you take them out. It's really... Not to it. After we have everything dead, we can go up here, which we will get. Okay, if, if if precision bolt was the bread and butter of this run, super shotgun, which we just picked up, is the is the stake. Like, it's just really good. So, uh, it's really good because it does a lot of damage. So, you know, we like high damaging things. Okay. After an arena that's going totally well. I misclicked there and accidentally used, uh, and accidentally used my ice bomb a bit too early. So that's what caused all the all the kerfuffery in there. Game is punishing for if you don't do everything exactly how you planned. A lot of this run is basically improvising if uh, if something goes wrong. Having that in your pocket is like probably the most valuable skill you have. Zai, who has the world record in the base game. Not every combat in his world record run goes according to plan and he has a um, he has a 155. Eesh, that's pretty, that's pretty fast. That was the Zai, the robot. Looking speedrunning machines. Here we have another secret encounter. This one's also very scary when casually, because you're in a very close space. Oh, this is frickin'. That went... All according to plan. Nothing went that. A whiplash didn't behave how normally whiplashes take more damage there, but it happens. 
Die bot, yeah. This guy, we will be using Q balls again here to deal damage very quickly, as well as getting some downtime chainsaw there. We chainsaw there in particular because we have to wait for a Kako to spawn, and so it's basically a free chainsaw while we're waiting. We also solved the puzzle while the Kako was spawning in, which is uh, really good. Here we're getting another free chainsaw because it's some downtime. As well as precisely killing this Hell Knight with a trap. Freaking combat optimization, you could write like a PhD thesis on this game. There's so much of it. Kill that Arachnotron because it gets a bit scary. Mm. And here we will use the meat hook. Which I guess I didn't explain yet. The super shotgun has a grappling hook attached to it, so this is the best game ever. So... We will be using this a bunch in the run because it actually moves you quite fast and also allows for a tech called Geet Hooking, which basically uses the meat hook attached to this gun to fling you places really fast. Cool property about the meat hook, which you saw me abuse right there, is that when you meat hook onto something, it refreshes your jumps. So you could double jump, meat hook, have your jumps refreshed, and then jump twice again. So you can have a total of like four jumps. Here we're on to the next Slayer Gate where we will be killing everything quite fast. First use Mankibai. Then we have to kill five fodder. And for the last fodder, I chainsaw it so that while the next Mancubus spawns in, we will be at, we'll, we'll have been chainsawing. Because the game considers things that you're chainsawing, they're dead at the beginning of the chainsaw animation, which is really helpful. So if you know when the next wave is coming, you can just chainsaw preemptively. And also, so that you are wasting effectively as little time as possible when chainsawing. Okay, now that we got all the Arachnotrons dead, we have to kill everything else in this arena and it's considered done. Making sure to grab a bunch of chainsaw fuel before we depart too. We're upgrading the super shotgun here. Now, part of the 100% route is that we'll have to master a few weapon attachments. Weapon attachments basically each have these little challenges attached to them. Once you upgrade them fully, it'll be like, hey, do this thing, and we'll upgrade it again. The so Super Shotgun's upgrade mastery is we need to kill 50 things that we have meat hooked onto with the Super Shotgun. So, we'll be doing that for basically the whole route. Uh, one thing to note, you saw me fully upgrade Lock-On, which is the rocket launcher attachment. However, we will not master that. Ro Turns out the mastery is just really good to have because we lock onto things faster. However, the mastery is slow to get. So we will not be doing that whatsoever. We'll probably, we have to master about eight weapons. And we will be, well, eight weapon attachments. The rest of the game gives you mastery tokens. Which mastery tokens are like, hey, upgrade this weapon for free. You don't have to complete the challenge. So we will be doing that for a few weapons. Uh, there, you, there is a category where if you view mastery tokens as cheating, you can uh, run that and you'll be forced to master everything naturally and not use a mastery token. It's called natural masteries. Uh, many people have run it, but. There's debate on whatnot whether or not it's fun. Some people prefer regular 100%, some people like natural masteries. Oh. And this end. Right. Now, during that fight, we picked up the haste power up, or it's called overdrive. Overdrive is basically gives you unlimited ammo. It decreases the cooldowns for all your weapons. You can fire attachments quicker and whatnot. And so that you just Zoom. We, of course, abuse that as much as we can in order to fire as many rockets as we can because they're high damaging. Woohoo. Now we're on to Doom Hunter base, the fourth level of this game, and debatably the start of the run. A lot of our movement tech was locked because we had to 
essentially get to it. So now that we have our movement tech, our meat hook, our dashes, everything, we can essentially have the freedom to do a lot of cool tricks. After this mini train section combat where we just have to kill everything, we're approaching the base. Ah yes, the base. One thing you might notice me doing is that over the course of this run, I will be skipping demons in these sections. These demons are not tracked by the game. You don't get anything for killing them, so they're not required in Hunter Shout Shoutouts to my boy Dax, who runs Every Demon Must Die, which is a category he made up, but makes it fun because he requires himself to kill everything. So good for him. Over there, that's an example of a, a, a yeet hook, which we use the weapon wheel to slow down time. And I'll explain how that works in a bit when we do a uh, bigger yeet hook trick. So here we're introduced to the Pinky, which is super weak from being shot from behind. So we of course get behind it and shoot it. Uh, what the heck are these fodders? Uh, one thing to note that we will falter it. A falter is like this mini stun where like they, they, you know, the enemy steps on their back foot and so that we shoot them. We will be using this a bunch of times in the run in order to uh, just basically Give us some breathing room or get behind these pinkies effectively. One thing you might see me doing here, which I guess. Oh! A challenge for this. Uh, that was pretty nice. Uh, a challenge for this area is kill three demons with a single frag grenade. And I just got it when we, when we don't even. We route a different frag kill in, so that's just nice. Ah oh man, accounted for, calculated, let's go. One thing you might have noticed me doing, uh, I could fire pretty fast, well, first after subverting the secret, where we literally just have to open the door and then it becomes unlocked on the other side. But uh, we are doing this very subtle thing with the lock-on burst, where we are, after we fire a lock-on burst, swapping mods and then swapping to another weapon. This is because the swapping mod animation uh, overrides the cooldown for the rockets when you fire again. So you can immediately swap weapons and just start firing. And also the cool part about it is that it doesn't uh, actually swap your weapon mod. So you'll effectively have all your mods. On. So you'll still have like the lock-on mod equipped, which is exactly what you want. After a very cool yeet hook. We are into this arena, which is normally where we would get the grenade challenge. Because there's just a bunch of fodder, but we already completed it. Oh, Revenant didn't spawn, so we'll get to do something nice. That enemy. Ah, uh, oof. That, that's a rip. I accidentally shot through another enemy and killed another enemy, so we're going to have to take the slow path. Punished for being too good. So normally what happens to Revenant spawn there, but because of uh, frame rate shenanigans, the Revenant trips and isn't able to enter the arena, so we just gotta wait for it to despawn out of bounds in order to continue. Okay, we just picked up our last and final rune, which is Faster Glory Kills. So we get this primarily because uh, we there are some required glory kills in the game, and just having this just makes it faster overall. Okay, here we will be moving on to this next combat arena, which is actually pretty scary because there's a bunch of traps everywhere and there's also a bunch of enemies. The good thing is that traps also affect enemies as much as they affect you, so they, they will take some damage. It's inconsistent how much damage they'll take, but you know what, I'm not going to complain. They just get some damage taken. I'm fine with that. Like, see that Arcus over there just died to a trap, which is common occurrence. Cool. Uh, let me take this time while we're doing some platforming to get some secrets to explain what eat and how it works. Eat hooking is basically if you move to the side when you have your grappling hook onto an enemy, you'll gain insane amounts of speed. Uh, this game works is that it gives you a, a certain amount of speed per frame hooked on 
the meat hook. Well, hooked onto the enemy. So, you may notice we have an FPS counter at the top right of our screen. We are getting around 250 frames per second. So, we are getting a lot of speed from the meat. Now, there's also this thing called the weapon wheel, which is an inbuilt mechanic that slows down time since you can select a weapon. But, now here's the cool part. If we slow down time while being on the meat hook of the enemy, we eventually get more frames that we are adding speed. So therefore we get a bunch of speed. So we get to do stuff like this and just completely go around the world. I call that the uh, yeet hook. Other people call it other things, but I don't, I don't listen to them because I like my name. <laughs> And if you liked that yeet hook, don't worry. There's a second one coming right here. Where we go back because we may have yeeted that that far. However, we need to get collectible, so we have to yeet back to get it. Now, that trick is super flashy and also a bit difficult to learn if you're a new timer to this game. So, uh, yeah, you should uh, totally not do that because that strat saves overall seven seconds. Seven Was seconds. You can definitely, like, get past times without doing that trick, let's just say. Okay, we are skipping all these enemies because they are not required. And we're gonna start doing prep for a boss fight coming up. Now, this boss fight... Very important that we have Heat Blast fully charged, and we also have... Uh, and we also have Blood Punch charged, which is in the bottom left. You, also can, you can also see reticles by my screen, uh, by my crosshair, telling me what cooldowns I have a bit. So basically, the, the goal of this boss fight is that we are going to stun lock it for as long as possible until we get to its second phase, and then we are just going to lock on it. So, using the faltering mechanics, like Heat Blast always guarantees a falter, Grenade always guarantees a falter, Blood Punch always guarantees a falter, so we will be using all that to just... Make sure that for his first phase, it can do nothing. Chainsaw to refill ammo as he transitions to the next phase. And lock on him to death. Glory kill, and we're done. But wait! There's more. You know how we just fought with that boss? Well, now we gotta fight two of them. So in order to prepare, you get two grenades by upgrading it. And pretty much just, um... Oh. Didn't get a falter. Yeah, always guarantees a falter. Thank you, Zax. That's appropriately timed. Uh, he must have either been A, just out of my falter range, or B, uh, or B, game didn't falter him, which it's known to do it sometimes. So, it's okay. Just have to restart this boss fight for a little bit. So, get this guy. Now, after this. Doom Hunter, where? Doom Hunter's just hiding, dude. How inconsiderate of that Doom Hunter! I'm trying to go fast here. So there we go. We finish this fight and we are out of here. Alter canceled. I don't think that's a tech that happens. Basically, the Doom Hunter just didn't falter one of those times, and that's what threw me off. The game does that. Like you, you can practice for an eternity in this run. This game will throw things off. Will throw things at you that you can't even expect. So a lot of it is expecting the unexpected, and sometimes a run will just die because there's no way you thought what could have happened happened. Ask any Ultra Nightmare Runner, they will tell you the same thing. Okay, we just killed one of the three priests uh, hurting Earth, so now we are, they, in response to us uh, trying to um, 
kill, you know, stop the invasion, they're like, hey man, that's not cool. We're going to make the invasion even harder now. So, they they basically increase demon activity and we're here to stop it now. So right here, we're in Super Gornest, which is the demonest place on Earth. What Vega just said. So we are here to stop the nest from being bad. And we'll of course do this with our words. I mean guns. Same things. Very precise combat here, by the way. And where are you? You're dead. And that's everything dead. And now we just gotta wait to... One thing to note, we picked up the Ballista, which is basically the uh, the replacement for the Heat Blast. It's just really good. So we use this gun a lot for uh, particular reasons. One, it's really good. Like, it does a lot of damage from a range. It's, it's good. But also, it has a side effect. Oh. Reminds me. Of it... It goes so fast, or it fires with such veracity that it actually physically knocks you back, giving you some backwards momentum. So, we use this, of course, we got backwards momentum, we're going to just use it for speed. So, a very good uh, tech that you'll see me doing all throughout this level is called Ballista Boosting. Now, I'm also uh, killing all these pinkies because, well, glory killing these pinkies because that's one of the challenges required in this run. Okay. Well, in this level, I'll say. We do that by, of course, just uh, shooting with the precision bolt and the rocket a bunch of times in its face. And that consistently gives us uh, a glory kill state on the pink. Here we're introduced to the buff totem, which the buff totem, it's just basically a stick that gives demons nearby it extra damage and extra speed. So they hit harder and they hit faster. So a lot of the run, whenever we have a buff totem, is immediately finding the buff totem because we don't want to die. Here we're going to be using the destroyer blade, which is basically this big area of effect attack in order to deal with the secret encounter pretty well. Destroyer Blade is really good because it does a lot of damage and it also can hit multiple demons. It does about the same damage as a lock-on burst, just under it. So if you can imagine, um, being able to hit like five, six demons with a Destroyer Blade is really good and it's worth the slow charge up time. Here is a very, very, and I mean very, precise uh, combat encounter, so give me a second. We will be using quad damage to his full effectiveness. Up. And it's fine. And. Man, this guy didn't die either. The quad damage was a bit late in there. So I think he should be good, though. Yeah, everything is dead. There are times in this level where you ignore the buff totem? Oh, just wait a bit. Just wait a bit. Buff totem's super scary, but uh, sometimes it's slow to go for it. There are definitely situations. You'll be seeing one of them in a second. This is a Spectre. It's basically an invisible pinky, but you can gl glory kill those all the same. Uh, and it counts as a pinky, according to the game. Here, I'm going to be going for a Destroyer Blade strat, which is somewhat precise, but it's also fun. Or we will bunny hop with Destroyer Blade, because it keeps your momentum. And yeah, we use that to clear that whole arena. Because everything can die in one story place. 
Does the tyrant easter egg count? Isn't that only in the master level, Chris? Also, we were supposed to pick up a radiation suit. Uh, no, nah, we're not gonna do that. Picking that up is slow. Uh, we're just gonna complete this area where we have radiation infested water. And we will, uh, just do everything and then we'll pick up the suit. There's another secret encounter where we just gotta kill everything. Standard level. Oh, it's in the standard level too. You know, there could, that that could be fun to show off. Maybe in the mar in like the actual marathon, you'll do that. Well, I'll do that. Oh wait, hold on. I I actually need to um, glory kill this pinky because I effed up the specter. There we are. That could. <laughs> That could be an incentive to do it, Chris. We can, they're thinking of incentives here. We can include all the Easter egg encounters in the level if we wanted to. Like, that'd be a pretty cool incentive, in my opinion. Just be like, hey, also include all Easter egg encounters in, in the run. Because there's one in World Spear, too, that's really fun. Okay, we're picking up our ballist for the for the ballista because the ballistas power ups are so good that we master them both naturally. They're just really good uh, weapon mods. Okay, here there's a buff totem active. However, your this fight also isn't required, so we're just going to skip everything. So we will immediately just go go to the end here, and voila. And completely not almost die like a few times, but like that's the nature of this of doing this. Way faster than going for the buff totem. Also, one thing to note, we unlocked the chain gun in this level, we could have picked it up earlier. We didn't, because going for it's slow, and this game does account for you uh, missing items by pure chance, and they put them in later levels. Way faster to grab it in a later level. Here I just did a certain kind of tech, which is chainsawing during a cutscene. If you chainsaw into a cutscene, you basically stack the chainsaw animation on top of the cutscene animation, therefore just making it fast. It's just good to do. Here's everyone's favorite whiplash. It's pretty cool. You may notice I'm chainsawing here a bunch. Now. Streamer isn't chainsawing slow, and normally you'd be right. However, chainsawing gets us ammo, which therefore gets us ballista ammo. So therefore it's actually fast, because we can go faster later. We lose this time now, so we can make it up with a ballista boost, in other words. Alright, now we gotta wait for some enemies to spawn in, so we're gonna grab a couple secrets here. And no, look, an enemy spawned in. And then we're going to kill these guys. Then while we're killing that Arachnatron, we go and we grab this secret, which in a totally intentional way, they wanted you to Ballista Boost and do that. Now normally there's this other area where you have to go backtrack into previous areas just to get that Slayer Gate key, because we will have to do the Slayer Gate. Ooh, being on. You gotta go, and you may be like, oh, Strimmer, you're you're missing a few collectibles and whatnot. And I'll be like, yeah, you're right. But we just unlocked fast travel, so we're going to fast travel back to grab them. Because it's faster to And also a bit safer. Because normally there's enemies around this whole area. And if you fast travel, you just lose the time of fast traveling, which isn't that much. Next, we will fast travel back up to Vermilion Canal. Where we will go do the Slayer Gate. And also, if we fast travel, it cuts out a little, just a tiny bit of movement, like a second or two of movement. So it's not bad. Ooh, I am talking a lot. My throat's getting a bit sore. Here's the next layer gate. Which reminds me, before we get started, I have to upgrade a few things. So we upgrade Destroyer Blade because it's a really good item and we would really like it to be even better. It just helps and, uh, you know, makes uh, 
bit of the combat easier in a few arenas, especially in the level coming up known as Art Complex. Oh, Art Complex. I could... Every speedrunner's favorite level where the run totally never dies there. Soldiers here. Keep spawning in. We just gotta get them. I canceled firing the last rocket. That hasn't happened in forever. Here, while I'm doing all this combat, I make sure to grab three chainsaw just to deal with that Dread Knight. It's basically just an Orange Hell Knight a bit faster. Oh, also one thing. Uh, pinkies have a weakness to Blood Punch. If you punch them once, they will just die, which is really helpful. And you're dead. And that's a pretty good Slayer Gate. Moving on, now that we have collected everything, we will transport to the end to where we started an escape sequence, and we just leave. Just leave. Because we're blowing up the nest, and it's just like, oh man, you only have 80 seconds to escape. Run, Doomslayer, run. So we just get out of here as fast as possible. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. And we are making sure to use Ballista Boost as much as we can in order to get out of here as fast as possible. As well as, you know, all the B-Hop tech. And bam, that's it for Super Gore Nest. Congratulations. Did it. The final help location remains okay, Vega talks a lot during this transition in the Fortress of Doom, so we use this time to unlock a few collectibles. So basically we get everything underneath the ship. Just because, like, if you have to get all the collectibles, sure, it's faster to get them all at once, but if you're losing this time regardless, you might as well spend it putting in batteries. Which, this battery animation, we will get very accustomed to by the end of this run. There will be a lot of them. Uh, if there's any time for donations, now would be great whenever we're just doing downtime, getting batteries and whatnot. This game has a lot going on all the freaking time, so it's hard to keep that in mind. And we are out of underneath, but wait, there's more. There's also this collectible that we should get while we're down here. And there's also this collectible that we have to get out here. And yes, Doom Guy can breathe in the cold vacuum of space. Obviously. So we... Unlocking that door is important because we get the custom skin codex. All the codex entries are required for 100%. You have to grab. But there's also a secret there. So we can uh, essentially kill two birds with one stone by going to that one in particular. And now we're out of here. What's up, Quark? Okay. Art complex. <laughs> this level. This level's insane. So many deaths lost here. So many deaths. Everything will just... You're just... Everything's just... Yeah. It's a love level, and it's also a hated level. This level's really fun, but it's also really hard. Uh, so to start things off, upgrading Ice Bomb. We're going to do a precise Destroyer Blade here to kill these enemies. This area is no longer secure. Evacuation protocol is in effect. And this is just, this beginning section is the meme in my chat that I'm like, oh, hey, uh, goodbye, chat. It's the beginning of arc. I won't be able to see you. And that's exact. This is exactly why. It's just so much combat back to back to back. He jumped over the destroyer blade. Call that Hell Knight of the Year. My goodness. Hey, here we're going to see another instance of trigger demons, where we're just going to kill only the trigger demons and then leave. There was a bunch of demons in that arena. Don't worry about it. We get, as far as the game concerns, we got all the demons in that arena. It's fine. 
here. The challenge for this, uh, for art complex, we have to kill some, so uh, some enemies by blowing up a shield with the with the, the plasma rifle, and we just completed that. Oh, you have to kill those people. They better not get away. Here, these Machibus are not actually required, so we can just move right past them. Here, we're using the Destroyer Blade. Destroyer Blade is a really strong uh, damage wave, so therefore uh, it kills most things instantly, and even destroys their weak points. Which is important here, because in our Complex there is a challenge to destroy Revenant weak points. Those rocket dudes. So we will just destroy blade them to, you know, say, bam, instant kill, and also, you know, why not? Okay, here are pinkies. Oh my goodness. Well, this is gonna be... That pinky spawned a bit earlier than I was expecting. This is gonna be tough then. So here, we're going to kill only the trigger enemies, which is actually not a majority of these demons. A majority of these demons aren't even tracked. Uh, a lot of the demons here that are tracked are fodder, soldiers, imps, whatnot. Uh, oh, you were hiding from me. There we are, and that's all of them. Uh, for th reason why Ark is so dangerous because there's a lot of tight corridors, and tight corridors just hampers your mobility, meaning that if an enemy gets onto you, you're basically dead. That's the long and short of it. I just need more ammo. Hey, Chaco. So here's the next Slayer Gate, probably the hardest combat encounter in the run, uh, where we just have to deal with two Tyrants, which weren't even introduced yet, but they're enemies to where our, literally our strategy for killing them is just shoot them till they're dead. Probably the best, uh, the best tip in this game is that one. And get this final whiplash, and this spawns in the last enemy, this Doom Hunter, which yes, the boss became a standard enemy. That's a theme in this game. Oh, dead, let's go. Oh, die please. Cool. That should be everything, and that's a pretty clean Slayer Gate counter. Okay, moving on. All these enemies. Yeah, yeah. They're upset that we didn't kill them or something. Uh, now we pick up... For Chain Gun, we pick up Energy Shield. Energy Shield is... Well, we don't use Chain Gun regardless, but Energy Shield is, turns out to be really good. Because... Uh, well, it just blocks nearly all incoming damage. Most damage sources in the game can be blocked by an Energy Shield. So for safety, just picking it up... Swapping to it when need be is really helpful. And here, it doesn't matter what we pick up necessarily, but we pick up micro missiles because we will be mastering it later. So, yeah, our complex is very much just. Hey, how much combat can we fit? Oh, I guess another thing to bring up. I didn't bring this up when I upgraded it, but we upgraded Precision Bolt because its its challenge is just quite literally getting headshots with it. Which, if we're trying to do this as optimally, headshots deal more damage, so we're going to want as many headshots as possible. So, yeah, we're doing it. And plus it, like, loses very little time in comparison to every other method. Okay. So, 
they want to kill us those demons aren't required we're moving on and here is a cool skip that which we will be doing called airplane skip aviation skip whatever your name is first things first we got to kill everything and then do a precise lineup mess up the precise lineup okay we get a second chance at it and there we go we don't have to do this in combat encounter now this is really nice because um that means we don't have to fight those demons not fighting those demons is really nice because uh fighting those demons is slow but we will have to return here because there are some demons here that count as required we'll be doing that later picking up more runes doesn't matter which rune we get we already have three equipped you can only equip a max of three but we already got the runes for the run that we just pick up whichever one fancy us the most at the time. Did I skip the secret encounter? Yes, Dex. We go back for that secret encounter counter later. All part of the plan. Here, we got the Berserk power-up, which basically allows us to instantly glory kill anything. One thing to note about power-ups, which I did not touch on before, is that uh, power-ups, the more kills you get with them, the longer their cooldown will be. So you can essentially do more of them the more kills you get. So we try killing as much things in our downtime in order to um, make sure that we get that. Making sure we kill enemies in order to prevent an issue called spawn cap from happening. This game can only have so many things spawned in at once, and if it has the maximum things spawned in, it will not spawn anymore. So we make sure to kill a few things here in order to make sure that isn't, um... Also, look at that! I just skipped, like, half the level. Uh, that's called, that's called anime skip. Because we just skip half the level if they're an art complex. Here we're going to come up to our second boss fight, the Marauder, which hopefully, if all goes well... Ah, uh, didn't go well. He misbehaved. Yeah, it's called Anime Skip. Don't, don't doubt me. Now, remember that place we skipped? Well, we're going back to it now because, uh, well... We have to fight here. Might as well come back immediately. So after hitting the trigger to get things spun in, it's go time. Basically, it's just killing these things. One thing to note, after this en after this encounter finishes, there's normally enemies that spawn that we have to fight through. Doing airplane skip allows us to skip those enemies, which are not tracked. After we've completed the level, we'll just go back and fast travel everywhere. Why we skipped half the level is because this level has some long cutscenes and some long elevators that we just don't want to sit through. So, we just skip half the level, fast travel to basically stop those elevator rides. That is the Zero Master who found this. Must be there was was there a secret encounter? Yes, there was. I'll go back for that. Don't worry, Corp. Now we get into this arena, which has uh, a haste power-up, which we will promptly use. Where the heck does hell might go? And 
and after everything is dead. Oh, you kidding me? Ah! I just ba ran out of ammo at that time. That's that's stupid. It's cool, it happens though. I was able to save it. So every killing the trigger demons here, which in most fights is actually the heavy demons. But it's nice to clear the fodder when you can, because uh can lead to can lead to uh, basically just being safer, and also if you have downtime, why the heck not? There's this spider. Spider's dead. I think we are good. Cool. Now we just skipped an enemy there. It just made an entrance for us, and then we go by, and we do this area completely casually. Uh huh. No joke there. I actually did that strat in my casual encounter. It's kind of easy to do. You just gotta jump before you hit the purple goo. Purple goo, of course, being a thing where if you're touching, it slows you down, you can't jump, you can't dash far, basically just hinders your movement. So we just skip that entirely. If you do the speedrun optimally, there is not a single place where you touch purple goo. On. Here we upgrade Arbalus, a couple of suit upgrades. Cool. This, of course, to upgrade Arbalist, uh, because it's just a... What's it? The challenge for it is killing Kakos. Killing Kakos is just generally pretty fast uh, with the Arbalist, so we pick it up because it's less uh, time-wasted than any other weapon attachment. It's about as fast to kill them with Arbalist than it is our other best alternative method, a.k.a. the... Um, a.k.a. Uh, it's called... Well, anything else. Well, it's just double ballista. Uh, double ballistaing them. Which, it saves a bit of ammo, and despite being a bit longer. But over the course of the whole run, it saves time. Here, we're going to do the secret encounter. So. We... First rocket that pain elemental, and then we destroy your blade. And that just leads to a pretty quick encounter. Now we go to the last arena, Convention Parking. There we just have to kill some more enemies, and there we go. And boop, boop. Get a bit tilted. Of course, comma, of course. What? 2011 was a different time, which I think that's when Dark Souls 1 got released. So here, enemies are spawning in a bit late because of spawn limit issues, as we talked about later, earlier. Here we are. And bam, we got all the required enemies, we are out of here. Now we are out of Art Complex, the probably one of the most difficult parts of the run. Oma, I can't believe you are using this profanity to ruin my video. My goodness. Oma, whatever happened to E Girl Thought? We just heard the meme line. The meme line of, you can't shoot a hole into the surface of Mars. Can you guess what we're going to do in this next mission? Look at this nice BFG. BFG 10,000 is, of course, powered by the BFG, which stands for the Big Friendly Gun. Because we, when we use it, all the demons get hugged to death. With the power of friendship. So after a quick elevator sequence, we are immediately going to list the boost out of here. And just ignore everything, because these demons aren't required. So we can just freely skip them. Now, if 
you didn't do any Slayer Gates, this would be the first time that you would see a Baron of Hell. Which are these big red guys that are totally not rip off of Hell Knights or Dread Knights. And they're just basically very tanky enemies that we just gotta shoot them till they're dead. Much like tyrants. So, moving on. Here we are going to do some very precise combat because we have to kill a specific number of imps in order to do this while also making sure that we're mastering um, our bliss and a few things. After we kill the cat go, we have to kill five imps. Three. Four. Five. After we kill five, we go here, we use this chainsaw on Cybermank, and we are good. Now here I'm going to try a pretty cool strat. I'm going to charge up Destroyer Blade as I go into this arena. Ah, I just barely missed it. But you can normally hit that Pain Elemental over the Destroyer Blade, and it's quite free. Here, Doom Hunter is here. Of course he is. My Ice Bomb just barely went off the ledge, so we didn't get any. Um... So we didn't uh, get any Ice Bomb. Normally, uh, the Doom Hunter, if you Ice Bomb him as he gets out of his sled, uh, you practically interrupt his getting out of the sled animation with uh, Dean Freeze, which allows you to deal damage to him earlier. He's invulnerable during that transition phase. So we completely ignore this area, grab this Praetor token, and we are out of here. Ice Bomb here, you dash into him, you have to destroy two, uh, three Mancubus weak points, and I, you can just destroy that one by freezing it and dashing into it, that's pretty cool. How does the Ice Bomb work on current patch? Uh, you're gonna have to be more specific, how does Ice Bomb work in what scenario? There's a lot of ways it could go. Here, he will. Accidentally hit a wall, that's cool though, can we save it? Saved. Totally. Ah. Uh, that can happen. The invisibles are quite tricky there. And Doom Hunter does it still remove the vulnerability? It works slightly different, but for all intents and purposes, yes. You will be able to deal damage and kill him quicker. There is some... There is some asterisk with there with the Doom Hunter on current patch, but like we don't need to talk about it. That's uh, I think is a bit too complicated. Basically, it gives him like a damage vulnerability. Basically, it, during the animation, although despite it being quicker, he still takes damage from uh, sources. It's just severely resisted. There, we got our BFG. Our BFG is our friend here. He will use it to kill a lot of encounters very quickly. That would be very slow without. Another secret encounter down. Yeah. Hi, Florida. Welcome in. Normally, there is a skip we can do. However, if you're running Ultra Nightmare, you can't do that. So we are just going to, um, yeah. Continue onwards, because this is an Ultra Nightmare Showcase. I won't be doing any low checkpoint abuses or anything. Here we got our last rune of the run. We can switch him out intermittently if we want. We will at some point, but not anywhere soon. Here, we launch ourselves out of the cannon, but we skip the cutscene. I know, it's sad. All these enemies are included. We do a Ballista Boost, chain a bunny hop pretty precisely to, yes, mantle it, where we skip a puzzle. And here is my favorite album of the game, and I totally did not fail the animation cancel of it. I just really wanted you all to see it. Now here, we will use an extreme example of bunny hopping here to gain a lot of speed, because we fell quite a distance to go straight into this area where we will get to see The secret encounter is quite, uh... That's it. Not too bad. Most of the secret encounters aren't too bad.
They're primarily just some fodder and a few heavies just to give you like a small little test. Ah, I'm at 42 at Meat Hook Mastery, that's pretty good. The Precision Bolt, yeah, that's actually 52 is more than fine. Normally you want uh, a, a lot of, uh, a majority of both challenges done here. Especially Meat Hook Mastery. Here, I was going to do some uh, precise Ballista Boosts, but they didn't turn out, so I had to improvise there, and movement. Yeah, let's go. Here we'll be using our BFG to take care of these barons real quick. Ah, this Arachitron didn't die from that. Ooh, that's that's pretty that's pretty lame. But we got it. We're on to the next encounter, this pain elemental to fodder, but the good thing is is that we have to wait for a prowler to spawn anyhow. So we might as well get a chance. You can see here the Arbalist mastery of killing Kakos. We just do that whenever we have a downtime moment. Here we do another cool B hop while picking up this BFG. And skip all these enemies because they're not required. Yay. Yeah, Floridor, this is Nightmare. I'm submitting this to a marathon. Ultra Nightmare is not marathon save. Here. We're coming up to the next Slayer Gate, which we will be doing actually a current patch exclusive trick that I started doing ever since, uh, shoutouts to Absolute Massive who came into my chat and suggested it one day. Makes this, uh, uh Slayer Gate real easy if you're do running this on current patch. Why didn't I take the crystal? <laughs> Mirror's Edge. Ab- We missed it. Sorry, that- It's 100% except for that- That collectible. But no, uh, we will come back to it later, uh, after we do this encounter. So we have a Marauder here. It was one of our bosses, but we have a BFG now, so it can be a bit easier. So we BFG the Marauder basically to prevent it from, um, being too good. Also, that Marauder is, like, probably the most inconsistent Marauder in the game. So, it's just better to BFG it while everything's around being nice. And also, it kills everything else around it pretty too while we're at it, so it's actually not that bad of a BFG. Now, there's the Sentinel Crystal that somebody in my chat gladfully pointed out. And we grab it later because it, whenever we get an ammo upgrade, it refills all of our ammo. Everything that we were missing. This includes BFG ammo. So effectively, if we get the Sentinel Crystal later, we can use two BFGs in that Slayer Gate and potentially get two free more. So that's why we do it. Okay, now after... We blew a hole into Mars, we're going to go to the center of Mars because there's a lost city of hell there. Because this game has a, a lore or something. Okay, here we're going to EFG. Basically clear the room. Then we have to trigger kill these enemies, which actually aren't Trigger demons, but the spawn wave is triggered by them being in stagger, not by them, um, not by them being killed, which is weird. So, gonna get two Kakos here. And then we're gonna Yeet Hook out of the level. Talk about a good Yeet Hook. Yeah, fun fact, Mirror's Edge, if you read the whole lore and do a 100% speedrun, it'll add two hours to the time. Only two? Yes, Quarth. Uh, current patch has this neat property where we get more cacos than down patch, because we have to do a few things a bit differently. So, there's more cacos in my route. I technically don't have to shoot any of those if I wanted to. 
there's enough cacos. Here is Sentinel Prime. But speaking of which, did you hear about Twitch Prime? Everyone's made that joke. It's funny. Uh huh. Here is a boss fight level, but we have some platforming to get to that boss fight. So where we just have to pick up a few collectibles. These codexes give a bunch of lore. The Con Maker, which is that big angel lady that's a that's a hologram right now, is telling us about oh the past of the Doom Slayer. Blah blah blah. Nah. We're just gonna speed past, skip her dialogue, all that stuff. So, coming up in a second, we'll be facing the Gladiator boss fight, which is one of the best boss fights in Doom Eternal. You will not- you will hear me compare it to the final boss in about two hours. So here, the general strategy is stagger the boss, and then it gets out of stagger, and we immediately alpha rotation it while its shield is turned. And then we meet hook. Shooting it from the top because it can't turn its shield upwards. And there we go. That's first phase one. Definitely the former Mirza. This is a shooter with platformer elements. Combat is the main focus. So, after we completely bypass the shield, the gladiator goes like, screw you, I don't need a shield, and then pulls another uh, mace out of his man cave or something, where we pulled the rest of our weapons from. Oh, come on, dude. So, I'm just gonna try doing as much damage as possible, and because this is a boss fight, it does this great thing of, in between phases, it refills your ammo. So, I'll use the BFG again here when we have some downtime, or when I'm low and just continue to shoot it into this thing as fast as I can. Oop. Game's perfect. It... What the heck was I locking on to? There's this big boss that I want to glory kill to finish it off, and I punched the soldier. Good game, good game. After we're done here... Now we go back into the Fortress of Doom, to where we find out that the Cotton Maker really hates how we've been killing all the Hill Priests, and we just killed the third one. Oof. So... She obviously sent about 15 imps into our Fortress of Doom, which is obviously will kill us. Right? Because we haven't dealt with more than 15 imps before. So, bit update lore-wise, the Icon of Sin in, is being released by the Con Maker, which is basically this bid bag, demon ace in the hole they have that they didn't want to release till now, but we kind of forced her hand. So we have to basically get a power-up, and we're going to get our ancient weapon uh, from the lost city of Nabad, as Samuel Hayden would say. Shield blocks everything damage, not his waves. Shield damage blocks a few other things, Mirror's Edge, not just the gladiator waves. Archfile flames, uh, and also, I believe, Cybermank damage. Cybermank do it doesn't block. So, there's a few things. Great thing about starting a level is it always starts you with free chainsaw, so we can just kill the Cybermank very quickly, because we have it. Here, we're gonna have a Marauder, which will play nice. He's gonna play nice. Watch, guys. Oh, he would have played nice, but lock on triggered on something else. Mm, ooh. He would have had it, but then lock on. It's okay. That was a pretty good fight still. Okay, now we will do some totally intentional movement. A dash boost, which is totally what the developers wanted you to do. To just skip a bit. Funny Cybermank that we will kill because it's dangerous. And here, Taurus the Bad is probably my favorite level in the speedrun. Because we just have so many cool BFG strats to do. We are introduced to our favorite enemy, the Archfile, who summons an enemy, so obviously we want to kill him quick. So what better way than just shoving a BFG in his face? Oh, Archfile didn't... Our file didn't die. He's prone to do this sometimes. Let's 
When that arch file does not die from that BFG shot, he can F things up, and I had a little bit too little ammo for that Doom Hunter. So here we're gonna go around collecting some collectibles. You may notice that in that secret encounter, in in that combat arena, I triggered a secret encounter the same time I uh, did the fight. So therefore, we were able to do both at once and clear them both with a BFG shot. After doing some secret hunting. We will trigger this puzzle completely as intended. Basically what happens is when you're when a hit scan weapon like the precision bolt hits a water surface, it'll just go through everything, including walls, so that we can hit that target for the shooting puzzle a bit early. So yeah, pretty cool. Being a witch, I won't be using Ice Bomb a few times when I don't have to here, because one of the uh, challenges for this level is keeping cool, where you just have to... Collision is great here. It's just Ice Bombing enough things. After we trigger that secret, get that. We will go here. There's a cutscene about lore, about why we're so good and Poggy Woggy. I'm not actually joking. That cutscene is how Doom Slayer got a lot of his powers. Here we have to gory kill a few pain elementals because of the challenge, so we just grab one here. And after we're done, the Cybermax not being good. BFG to clear the room and hopefully also get this Doom Hunter. We don't get this Doom Hunter, that's fine. We'll just um, deal with him the regular way. And hit these buttons. Bam. We do a chainsaw while this elevator is going down. So that we... Uh, elevator didn't trigger. Aw, oh, man. He wasted a second or two. Hmm. This won't do. I better reset. Here we're going to do the same thing. We do open this gate. And here we go. We just swim through water because the game doesn't expect you to have the gate open while there's still water in that room. Here we're going to use a cool destroyer blade strat. Kill these things. Fair in the spawns, we want him dead. Reminds me. While I'm here. Normally I upgrade the at these at the beginning, but it doesn't really matter, I guess. Waiting for the archfile to spawn. You fire the BFG shot, and he should be dead. Cool. Yeah, game is buggy sometimes, Mirror's Edge. Sometimes Doom just be Doom. It's a meme. At me, bro. He's stuck. Ah, uh, that was close. He exposed his back, though. Ah. Uh. Okay, come on. Marauders are pretty bug. It's why when most people are running base game 100%, they run on patch 1.1. Which, that basically uh, allows for a Marauder exploit to where if you Ice Bomb, basically their Marauder will prioritize uh, Ice Bomb over everything else. So, if you fire it over its head, it'll try blocking the Ice Bomb. So you can just shoot it to death while it's blocking the Ice Bomb. That, of course, has been patched on current patch, so if we fail one of our Marauder 1 cycles, we kind of just have to accept that and deal with it normally, which is unfortunate. Here, I'm going to do a BFG strat, where I immediately look down after firing it. This causes the spawn-in animation of the Marauder to happen a bit quicker, so he takes a bit of damage from the BFG. And he did, but he didn't take too much. What? Maybe around his feet. And just for, just for fun, geez. I not get that glory kill. So, this game is nothing if not consistent. It's true. Grab this for safety, because people always need that for safety. Uh, Marauder does not get damage from the BFG. Marauder has this, uh... 
property of Ultra D well, this property where he will just block the BFG tendril. So that's why we usually have to stagger him if we want to BFG the Marauder. Here, we're down on BFG ammo, so we grab an ammo crystal just to refill us on BFG. Some cool Ballista Boost, and we are on our way. Yeah, uh, you can do this combo with the BFG to where you shoot it up in the sky, and then while the Marauder's blocking it, he's blocking the BFG, so you can just shoot him. So then he'll falter, and then you'll uh, be able to just damage him with the BFG and also your regular damage. But it's not as simple as just firing in the sky and damaging the Marauder. Normally, for the Marauder to take BFG damage unprompted by anything else, he has to be spawning in. Because he won't block it if uh, the BFG is going off, if he's still in his spawn in. And... Here we just got some downtime as we're collecting collectibles. We got a cool dash boost here. Find with a ballista boost in order to... That should have gotten that collectible, but uh, this game's punchable walls kind of suck. We'll get it the second time, it's fine. Yeah, punchable walls, when it gives you momentum, it can just kind of fling you in a direction that flung me downwards. So after going through here... Grabbing this, go down to where we don't miss this collectible, which pains me casually. And we're going to do another one of those shooting a target through water uh, thing, so that we skip an area. Of course, because we just refilled ammo, we have free chainsaw too, making that arena kind of easy. Here we grab a mastery token. And we get the Crucible, which is basically the super weapon they just introduced in this game. It can kill anything in one shot. However, you have limited ammo, so it's about when's the best place to use it. We actually don't use it too many places in this run, simply because it doesn't save too much time. But it, it's a very nice addition to have for killing a few heavy demons. Oop. Welcome in, Dolan. Submit. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get this submission. Oop. Okay, after we do this, we skip the section. We skip the Slayer Gate, actually. So we're going to fast travel back to it. So that we can complete it now that we have full BFG and the cruiser, which will really help. Play a gate. Here's our favorite arch file. And we need to get glory kill this pain elemental. Congratulations, we did it. Now that all that's dead, we can just BFG the room, basically destroying two pretty long waves. There was a tyrant there, but because everything dies in one shot with the crucible, it's just dead instantly. And we just finish off these Mankibai, and we are done with the Slayer Gate. Was normally a really tough encounter, made kind of easy. Make sure to grab the Slayer Gate. Yeah, welcome in, Quinn. Thank you for the kind words. And now that we have everything, we are out of here. After we grab a few Crucible Charges. Uh, Quarth, I'm recording this specifically to submit to ESA, but I'm also just putting this on my YouTube channel if people just want an explanation of the route in general. So I just say typical marathon. Plus, also, I can use this to resubmit if I want to. So that's the general strategy. Haha! -ha! So here, boring area. 
So I am going to, uh, during a marathon, this would be, we're just collecting all the collectibles before the final expenditure of the journey, so that we are, um, just collecting everything before we go. So this would be a great time for donations in the marathon setting. I'm submitting to ESA, Dolan. Submissions close the 30th, so I'm doing this today. Getting some help from you guys, too. So this is the part where I completely ignore everything and I just ask, what's up, chat? How you doing? Anybody do? Anybody got anything fun planned for Memorial Day? Any cool stories? I'm gonna be here for a couple minutes. Tell jokes. Jokes are pretty cool. Ah, oh, with your grandparents. Oh, hell yeah, Quinn. Hope it goes fun. I'm going back to visit my family. So I'm kind of excited for that. I haven't seen my sisters in a long time. Is it possible to skip these animations of inserting the battery? No, it's instrumental to the Lord. Doom Eternal would never want you to skip these cutscenes because of how it just pulls the plot together. Like, the plot would make no sense without the battery putting in animation. It's that simple. Really. Doom Eternal with family. Oh no. So if we go here, we finally get these final health upgrades, and we are going to get the weapon of mass destruction after this. Why did the chicken cross the street to escape the butcher? That's a bit too on the nose, I think, for a joke, Quark. You got you got to do better than that. Like, um, what's it? Uh, why- Okay. Why'd the chicken cross the road? To go to the stupid person's house. Knock, knock. Who's there? The chicken. That's a joke. That's a joke. Because you don't see it coming. You gotta, you gotta at least not see it coming. Now that is original. I stole it from literally elementary school. I think everyone else did, okay? Everyone stole jokes from their elementary kids. Oh yeah, we just did We just did a great thing. We picked up the Unmaker, which is basically the BFG alternative. While the BFG is good at killing with a lot of things, the Unmaker is good at killing one thing with a bunch of bullets that uses BFG ammo. We use the Unmaker approximately zero times in this run. It is a weapon of un of staggering power. Great. Here we're in Necroval. This is basically the Citadel of Hell, where they send Argent Energy up to the heavens, aka Erdak, because the angels are in cohorts with the demons in Doom Eternal lore. Because why the frick not? Use your Unmaker? Nah, it's slow. Unmaker's a really good weapon, if there was only the Unmaker in the game. However, the BFG kind of trivializes it. Because nothing can be quite better than a free ring clear. Like, unfortunately, that's just how it'd be. Here, while this button's just waiting to activate, I just get some micro missile sticks. Micro missiles challenge is um, is making sure three things get stuck with micro with one micro missile volley. So we will be doing that. It's good at counting. The best okay. The best thing that the Unmaker gives us is that. It refills our BFG ammo. The only thing. Only thing it does. That's good. Here there is a cage which bugs out literally every time you get in it. 
Big guy at the end. Big guy at the end is actually worse than the BFG at. You'll see when we get there. So this is the auto scroller. This would be a great time for donations, unless you want to hear about lore for the Kali boss, the sightly, the sightless judge. Which is a mini boss fight. Mini boss fight. If you just look, there's these columns here. You'll see what happened. We're gonna be actually introducing a new tech called crucible canceling, which basically, if we crucible on something that's not like a, a strict designated enemy, like for instance, on one of Kali Boss's eyes coming up, or on a Doom Hunter sled. It does not count the Crucible charge, so we eventually get to use the Crucible for free a few times. So here, we just swing, and then we weapon swap as we hit, and we use it for free. Congratulations, we did it. And bam, we did it. We done did it. Here, uh, a challenge for this run, for this, uh, for this level, is killing things with traps. So we will take a break, just a small break, to kill a few things. We got six out of eight. That's perfect. We will get the rest in the. Um, we will get the rest of uh, the traps in the next arena. Here, we're going to get to the secret encounter, to where we will intentionally go. We will go the intentional way by killing this thing. And Ballista boosting out of here and skipping some a door opening. It's great. Exactly as it intended. Thank you, Hugo. Oh. Where is this whiplash? There you are. So we BFG to clear this room because we get a BFG here, and we wait for an arch file. Ah, here's the arch file. How you doing there, bud? Something blocks it. Let's go. Uh, yeah, I did get. Just checking. I wasn't sure if I got one or two, which can happen. Now we are out of Necroball. Well, that pit of Necroball. We are going here. Ooh. Let's just get here just a bit early. Got a buff totem that we destroy. Immediately BFG to clear the room. This room is actually pretty quick to complete. However, we just have so many BFG. We just gotta use it. That's just the best place to use it. Should be enough. Just barely. Got another Marauder here who will play nice. He played so nice. Let's go. That was, of course, sarcasm. He, um, I think a lock-on just got into something behind him, which can happen. We wait for this elevator. Oh, we're here. I'm just going to upgrade everything that's usable. Then... I like upgrading stickies and dual lock using mastery tokens that we picked up earlier. So we don't have to master them naturally. We have to do one more secret encounter and then we're out of here. So, we break through this, get a few uh, goodies. Get a completely intentional dash boost there. And now we have to wait for a Baron to spawn, so we're just going to farm Micro Mystic Mastery while we're doing it. Okay, now we're in the final arena. Now we have one more challenge to complete, which is getting a glory kill on a Doom Hunter. There are two... There are two uh, glory kill opportunities in here. Because there are two Doom Hunters. I'm gonna try faltering it and Crucible canceling. I am out of ammo.
The set glory kill setup for Doom Hunters is just one locked on. And then we glory kill it from the left, just like that. Now that everything's dead, we can just get out of here. And we are done with Necroval, part one. But just wait, I know how much you guys like Necroval, so we put in another level of Necroval. It's great. Necroval 2 is every speedrunner's favorite level because it has three of the easiest challenges in the run. It's true. It's actually really hard. Uh, first things first, we have to kill, get multi-kills with Blood Punch five separate times. So if everything goes according to plan, we should be able to get it here. Ah, uh, we were just one short. That setup can be a bit wonky. So now we have a secret encounter here, which we during which we will just during which we will just continue on the rest of the level. We will spawn in the rest of the enemies, and when we spawn the rest of them in, we will then BFG just to clear everything, making it a bit easier. There, we got our, uh, we got our Blood Punch Palange changed up, well, finished up. And here we get our last Sentinel Crystal, just as we get more BFG ammo. Huh, funny that. Somebody must have routed that out or something. Okay, you're dead. You're dead. So... We're clearing just the trigger enemies, trying to get the battle arena in its final state. And then we BFG to clear the room. And we are out. Now normally, talking about 1.1, you might see runners use the Unmaker there. Literally the one use of Unmaker, that's because on uh, previous patches, you could... The Unmaker, when combined with Overdrive, would give you unlimited Unmaker ammo. So you could just spam it to your heart's content. However, on current patch, they removed it, so we unfortunately do not have access to that tech. Okay. So we got an arch file that we have to glory kill as well. Please get out of my way. They all got out of my way. Thank you. We got this Marauder. I am completely drained on ammo. That sometimes happens. Sometimes if you shoot the Ballista to the side of the Marauder, it will falter them automatically. We will use this to our advantage in the DLC. That's one of the Marauders where it works with so. Every Marauder has like slightly different AI. So it's kind of hard to get the side ballista, ballistaing them to the side to work a lot of the time. That was close? Nah, it was fine. I don't know what you're talking about. I was to the right side of it. Whew. And we are almost out of Necroval. Let's go. Ah. Elevators, as we watch Samuel Hayden give exposition to Bray. Fourth. The glory kill for the Archvile was a problem for me, first starting out, but here's the trick to the glory kill. You gotta stand to the back and to the right of it. You never stand anywhere near the front of the Archvile, and it gets consistent. I learned the hard way of how to set up that glory kill, which that setup for the glory kill is two lock-ons and a precision bolt bot shot or a combat shotgun shot. Healer's choice. So, now that we've gotten some more collectibles in this more traversal puzzle, 
now we will be skipping this elevator combat section because it is not counted. So, we will uh, stand here at this precise spot, ballista jump, and bam. And I'm going to go for a cutscene skip here. So, if I don't get too far onto the ledge, and if I fall off, I get reset. I would hit a death flame. But, normally there's a cutscene that plays. But, if you're like me, and if you fall off there, you've never encountered the cutscene trigger because you teleported behind it. So now we can just leave. And now we're in the last arena of Necroball. Which we have to do a Tyrant Glory Kill from the back. And there's one Tyrant in this whole level, so we better not F it up. In Ultra Nightmare, this is definitely a, a clenchy moment. So, I will do three lockdowns, Precision Pulse Shot, and PV Ballista. And then I will get behind it to do a Precise Glory Kill from the back. Now, there's actually a bit of inconsistency there. Sometimes when he's in an animation or near a slope, he, the Glory Kill just won't trigger. Or, excuse me, he will just not get into a glory kill skate. That's just how it be. You learn to deal with it. Here we're just waiting for more Kakos to spawn, as well as this Doom Hunter here, and the arena will finish. Now, as you stand on that jump pad, weird property about that jump pad, you don't need to stand on for the whole duration. Just stepping on it once will set the chains in motion. Once we but break the chains that bind us, we may progress on into heaven. I think that's a Bible verse. I don't know. That sounded prolific, though. I'm gonna go with it. Here, as I did some quick dashes after doing that, I did a cutscene skip, allowing me to get into Erdak. Yeah, there is a bug where if you use a Crucible cancel, it will just blood punch for you. Here, we are in heaven, aka Erdak, as it's called in the Doom universe. And we will, uh, we have some kind words to say to the con maker. So we're going to try getting to a meeting with her right away. So we will ignore all this platforming by doing some that ballista boost and dashes. As the, you know, Erdak introduces some jump pad parkour things. And... Here, the Icon of Sin in that cutscene we just skipped. Uh, the, a con surprise, surprise, Con Maker's ace in the hole. She couldn't control it. So now it's released on Earth, and we have to go stop it. And we have to wait for this fight to progress a little bit, so we're going to take this time to farm some Micro Missiles Mastery. Oh, there's downtime. Going to get... I'm at... I'm at 9, actually. I'm fine. I'm out of here. What's up, Jester? The icon of Sin is no longer in the card maker's control. The longer he's on Earth, the stronger. So after we continue to get out of here, we completely ignore some platforming, as intended. And we Ballista Boost all the time, because there are Maker Drones, which are these uh, enemies with yellow heads. And the Maker Drones have a great property to, F if you headshot them, congratulations, they just drop a bunch of ammo and health. So we will use that to refill rather than chainsawing a bunch. We will save all the chainsaws for, the Cy for Cybermax and hard enemies. Here we use a meat hook to skip some intended platforming, and we kill it later, and therefore the arena is done. Yeah, pretty good, Chester. We're just commentating this marathon thing. It's going pretty well. Chester, person in chat right now, he's also the only other person to run this category with me. I'm just saying, people, please run it. It's a fun category. You literally do everything. Can't get mad. Oh. Okay. I was trying to crucible cancel here, but I guess that game just didn't want to put away the crucible for like a solid few seconds. Great game. Okay, 
Yeah, get mad, especially when you die anymore. Don't. Don't. You will give Jester PTSD. Okay, so that arena was literally just uh, killing, a, killing a Baron with the Crucible. So once we kill that Baron, we are free to leave. So we just kill him as he opens the door. Here is another Marauder coming up that I hope to God I will get. Okay. Please behave nice. Ah, that was close. It's okay. He gave us good RNG, so it doesn't matter. So, you can skip this cutscene on previous patches. However, this is current patch, so you can't do so. So, you can normally skip it with a skip called Daddy Skip, because Vega is the father. Insert laugh track here. Thank you. Laugh. Okay, moving on. After this cutscene, we're going to grab a Sentinel Crystal. A, excuse me, a Sentinel Token, and then we're just going to zoom on past and do a great skip, which I actually have no idea what it's called. I just know it's, it's freaking... You guys are going to enjoy Erdak. Erdak has a lot of fun movement skips. Exclamation mark, uh, Marathon Jester. Okay. So we will stagger this, uh, Maker Drone. And then we will use it to... Okay, we'll just use this gargoyle instead. And we are in another arena now. We use this trick to basically, uh, for... You'll see in a second. But, practically, we are going to use this trick to, um... Combine with a BFG strat, essentially. So... Now that we have all the enemies spawned in, we aim at the previous arena, send the BFG from this arena into the previous one. Essentially, two birds, one stone, two encounters, one BFG. Really cool thing. Yeah, Jester, specifically this recording is for ESA. Also, GR Power, welcome in, my dude. So after we do that movement skip, which nobody ever fails in an Ultra Nightmare attempt and dies, nobody ever. We got... One more... Ring to align, because we have to align three rings in order to teleport back to Earth, because lore. So, we can see that we cleared this arena with a BFG, and we are out of here. Out of here, yep. That's exactly what has happened. That's exactly what happened. Let's go. Grab this. And you liked how that last trick was hard. Well, Erdak has a few hard tricks. Here's, here's, uh, after this encounter, there's one of them. So we immediately get back into this to do the secret encounter. Die, please. Thank you. I did get hit by the destroyer blade, which is a bit weird. Then we ballista boost out of here into this encounter, which we just skip a door opening animation with this. That's all we do. So now that we kill everything here. There's a Baron that spawns, and here comes the cool trick. So we crucible the Baron. There's a Whiplash over here. We kill him. And then there's a Kako here. This Kako is very important, actually, for this reason. Oh, it works. Okay. I didn't get the cool version of the trick, but I got the, uh, I got the Death Warp version. That Kako Yeet skips us all the way to the third ring. This basically, uh, what we do is, uh, that's called Mini Sausage Skip. This arena, basically, we take the time that enemies are spawning in in the next wave in order to align this ring, and then we go back to the arena and finish it.
Okay, cool. Now, moving on. We just yeet out of here. And we go to return to that arena. As we are destined. Cool, Every, all the AI is playing nice. Except this Kako. This Kako was in a different area than he usually is. That's cool. Please tell me I got it. Ah, I just barely missed. And then we eat off that Kako, exiting the arena. And we have that arena done without have, with cutting out some movement. Nice little trick there. Eat. Got a maker drone on the way. And now we have some kind words to talk with the con maker about. We don't like how she was in cohorts with the demons and then giving a bunch of planets up to demons in order to make sure that she, her, she doesn't die. Who cares? I don't. She, she, she's gonna pay. That's really what's gonna happen. So here's the boss fight. This boss fight, we cheese it pretty hard. We basically, we PB Ballista to get the first one, and then you will see how much that this encounter is trivialized by lock-on burst. So we just fire two lock-on bursts, and then we go in for a blood punch, and that's each phase. We're gonna see a lot of this. So yeah, after the first two phases, this is probably a good time for like one donation or so. It happened. Because it's quite literally just doing this. Oop. Riveting gameplay, yes. And that's Erdak. Now, congratulations, we just finished Erdak. Now we're on to Final Sin, the last level. Now, how last levels have challenges, secrets. Final Sin has barely any of that. Final Sin is just straight combat at, to finish off the base game. Developers knew what they were doing, and it was a final push forward to where, now that the Con Maker has actually unleashed the Icon of Sin, we actually have to stop it ourselves, because, um, of course we do. Who else is going to do it? So we just wait for everything to spawn here, do a cool little BFG. One little thing to note about that previous encounter is that um, all the trigger demons to get the other things to spawn were fodder demons, so we just had to kill the fodder there. Now we have to kill some actual uh, heavy demons, progressing the waves, this whiplash, this prowler, this whiplash right here, and this pain elemental, which we are careful to chainsaw last because it wastes the least amount of downtime. Now that we're waiting for the next wave to spawn, we farm some Micro Missiles Mastery, because why not? It's free. There's a Tyrant spawns. Oh, where'd that Tyrant go? I don't know. And Crucible Cancel to kill that uh, Doom Hunter, and we are out of here. I am I cannot tell you how long that took on my first casual playthrough. Eat Hook to get to this next arena. We're so fast, the enemies haven't even spawned in yet. Oh, there you are. And we're out of here. Trying to get a cut... Ah, I just barely missed the cut speed. It's cool, though. Little time loss. We're out of here. Now, you may notice, we don't have... We're at the final stage, and we still have two things to master. Uh, yeah. We will master them literally during the final boss fight. We are tightly routed. So we just gotta complete everything. Okay. Marauder behaved nice! Let's go! That's a, that's a change for once. Okay, now we are out of here.
and this is probably one of the harder arenas in the game. That's why we have a BFG here. Use it. This tyrant is dead meat. And we have a few crucibles. I'm gonna use them on these tyrants. Because they take too long to shoot. ammo before this next section as we are going to parkour out of here. So after we finish that, the Ballista boost to skip some combat and we are on to the final tracked encounter in the game to where we have a BFG and we fire it. Here we have another Marauder which I am just going to uh, not even deal with. I'm gonna wait for him to come. And that archfile is dead as heck. So now we got one last beat hook to finish off the run as we go to the final boss fight, skipping platforming and some, some transitional enemies away. Go like this. And we are all the way at the end. Okay, right before the final boss fight, we're going to upgrade everything. Well, everything that we don't master in it. Okay, we are going to upgrade all of this too. And let's do this, final sin man. Final sin strategy is quite easy. We take a BFG and we shoot it at him. It destroys an armor piece. We have to destroy all eight armor pieces. But we have to wait for all his armor breaking animations to finish, so it's kind of an auto scroller. So we're just going to alpha rotation of him in the face as much as we can. Get some more ammo. Which reminds me, I gotta master uh, energy shield, which I'll do in the second phase. But before we do this, we're gonna master micro missiles. See the icon Sin, he's punching at us. His attacks don't really do a lot of damage, we're fine. This is the hardest difficulty, by the way. Okay, we are out of here. By out of here, I mean we've destroyed everything and we mastered everything. We just gotta wait for his auto scroll animations to fizzle out. And then we're on to the final phase. So we're just grabbing everything. One thing to note is that normally all of his uh, armor breaking animations we play in a row on patch 1.1. But on current patch, he does he still attacks a couple of times, so this is actually a little bit slower than on 1.1. So yeah, we're just dancing around and waiting. Okay, he's dead, he's gone. We now wait for the teleport to the second phase. And to where we promptly tell him to come at me, bro. Came at me. Way to go. Now we're gonna fire a BFG, open up the energy shield. We have to deal damage while the energy shield is open. That's uh, why we get mastery for it. And there we go. We have this completed. Okay. So this is very much an auto-scroller like the previous phase. We just gotta wait for a few attack animations to play out and we'll be good. It hit his hands. That is rough. Ah, uh, BFG missed a couple of times. It's fine. As long as we're fast enough, this shouldn't matter. So we just gotta kill him. <laughs> and 
And there we go. After this attack animation, we should be good. There we are! 2.16 final time. That is not bad at all for a marathon of such. said, fortunately, this is not the end of the run. We have to verify, and then we're going on to the DLC people. So, let's see here. 8.15.8, and soon. That means everything's good. Everything's mastered. We got all the runes, codex. We got all the Elena Richardson logs, so we should be good. Scroll through everything real quick. Every entry in the codex, that is official 100%, people. We are good. Next to the main menu, let's move on to the DLC. Of course, Live Split has a bit of a, a bug to where it just finishes every split rather than um, completing. Okay, this probably won't happen during the marathon. However, I drink a bunch of water. I'm going to take a quick break, and then we're going to resume with the rest of the, with the rest of it. Okay, cool? Okay, cool. Have some fun, people. I don't know. Um, throw a party. Okay, people. Here. I am back. My camera's a bit fuzzy. Let me fix that, and we will get right into the DLC. Um... Do apply okay. Camera is fixed, we are good. Okay. Moving on to DLC one. DLC one goes really fast. Right, let's go to Ancient Gods part one. And let's go at Nightmare. We don't stop. Oh, man. Here we go. Now, Ancient Gods starts off with a default loadout. We will uh, swap up everything to get to the optimal speedrun loadout. One thing to note. We are going to farm so much blood punch here so i will be uh ice bombing flame belching all that stuff all in the goals of farming blood punch it normally is formed by gory kills however because this is up 100 percent save file we have health for blood and armor for blood which is which basically just if we have excess armor or health it will reuse that to refill our blood punch now there's a lot of destroyer blade strats here a lot of tight combat in UAC Atlantica. If you run tag one, you will reset your a bunch. Ask Choco. Ask Chocolate. That was Chocolate. Good runner in the DLC and also in base game. Okay. Kill all these imps and everything and we are off. This combat goes so fast, it's hard to describe. But we chainsaw there, uh, just because it's the optimal place is where we need ammo. And after we kill everything, we hit this button. Now, what's the lore of this, I hear you ask? Ah, uh, yes. Well, after we killed the con maker, the icon of sin, the world is saved. However, the world can be saved more. So what we're going to try, what the Doomslayer, Skulls, and... Aiden's goals. Basically, hey, wouldn't it be really nice if uh, the father was around? So we are doing this all in the hopes of getting the Seraphim right hands to the father, who is basically like Doom God. And we are going to use that to uh, basically get the father back in action, because he is out of action in Doom Eternal lore. The Seraphim is being held here at this water base. So we have to fight through the water base in order to get this character back. Okay, after we finish this off, we fire one BFG, clear out the room, and we are out of here. Now there's a quad damage here. I didn't use it, you may notice. Okay. Game's collision is good, I'll tell you that. I just floated above it. So I'm gonna grab a quick one up here for safety because one ups don't transfer between base game and DLC. DLC is its own like little campaign. Oh, 
charge up a destroyer blade to hit both uh, the Mancubus and the Revenant at once, except the, Re the Mancubus didn't want to get hit by that. He gave me some bad AI. I wonder what that does, Korth. I wonder. So now we will use the quad damage now that most of the encounter is clear, and we will clear, we'll, we'll clear the rest of the encounter with it now that we got two barons on, on the field. Now that barons are gone, we just have to kill everything and we can move on with our lives, be happy and whatnot. Wait. Ah, there's the last one. Pairing up fodder can always be a pain, in, no matter what category you run in this game. Okay, here... I actually probably should disable channel points. Oh, this Marauder's going for a... Uh, oh. Marauder, what did you do there? I haven't failed that in a long time, not gonna lie. So let's get this. So he's gonna jump across, and then he's gonna go for a swim. Bye, Marauder. Yeah. Basically, if you hook on to him with a meat hook, he will just uh, block it and stop all his momentum and completely just drown. Because he's in midair. So I'm gonna farm Blood Punch real quick for a sec. And the tag one speed run. Eh, uh, when. Sometime, sometime later, Sherry. But oh, welcome in, my dude. I like. Uh, What's it? Tag one's honestly like my least favorite campaign to run. I like running the other two, the other DLCs in base campaign more. Okay, now we're on a precise cycle here. In order, we basically called for a conveyor belt to take us to a next arena. It takes a while to get here. So while it's taking a while, we're going to complete this secret encounter. And hopefully... Uh... Looks like the Kakos were in a bad position, which pushed me in way of the air duck. That can happen, so I'm not making the cycle. It's a very tough cycle to make, but it is so sexy when you get it. And Dax, no, I'm not doing that. You just wasted channel points. Congratulations, my dude. We'll do that on a day where I'm not doing a marathon, okay, Sedition? Okay, cool, okay, cool. So now we have to just wait as we get get brought all the way up there. See, this is why why we wanted to skip this because this waiting for it is a big time save. It's it's unreliable. Even the top runners like fail that trick all the time. So it's no surprise, but it is really cool when you get it. It just feels so slick. Here we save three chainsaw for the cyber mag. And here we're gonna meet our good old friend the Archvile. And then after the Archvile is dead, we ballista boost, go over over here. Collect the codex. And we death warp because this puts us further back up there. And all these enemies are transitional. We don't need to do them. So I'm just moving on. Same thing here. You can just move past these. Wait for this Baron to come in. Ah, uh, I didn't get the cool trick. Good note, for the purposes of the DLC, I'm doing uh, an ace extension where I'm not doing every required fight. Only fights that are halted I am doing. There's some debate over whether or not the current system we have is worth it, so I'm going to do what is likely to be the new system uh, for judging hunting groups. So, yeah. Just a quick note. Basically, if anything halts an encounter via intended play, like, for instance, there's a door that's locked until you complete the encounter, or there's a button that unlocks the path after you complete the encounter, you have to complete it. Those are the general rules I'm going off. After all this, we have this oddly suspicious room with some ammo in there. 
And there should be a Marauder that spawns here. But if you hold out the energy shield and uh, hug the wall, he just doesn't go into the room. Basically what happens is that he spawns from outside the room and he jumps in through the portal. However, if you put your energy shield in there, he can't go through it. So, congratulations, uh, that Marauder just um, goes out of bounds and dies. Oh, wait. I did not pick up a chainsaw. It's okay, there's a backup chainsaw. Got the backup chainsaw. Ah, uh, it's the chainsaw, let's go. And there should be one Hell Knight. Hell Knight, thank you for coming to play, sir. And none of those rockets hit. Gotta love it when the game does that. Game can be a bit wonky at times, that's one of them. Okay, so Pain Elemental, two Kakos, this Baron, while we, while we have quad damage. And then there is this Tyrant that we need to kill. Now that everything's dead, we just continue the fight. Getting a couple chainsaws because ammo is kind of really tight here. Herring fodder, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we just go through the hallways. And we get stuck by a tyrant. It's okay, though. We have guns. Cool. Now that we guns the heck get stuck on a slope, which can happen because uh, that physics are weird. We go over here, do a quick little punch boost to get to the Slayer Gate, because there are Slayer Gates in this DLC. Okay, this Slayer Gate... It's a lot of... It's a lot. It's a lot. Okay. First, we're gonna charge up a Destroyer Blade as we're spawning in. There's two Revenants that need to die. This Revenant that needs to die. Then we have a wave that's spawned in that we can BFG out. We make sure to grab this Chainsaw so that we can Chainsaw a Heavy. Because we could use some ammo. Kill everything. We wait for this Archfile to spawn in. And now we move on to the Doom Hunter and the Tyrant. Okay. After Doom Hunter's dead, we work on to the Tyrant, which basically we just do our highest damaging alpha rotations the whole time to kill him. After everything's dead, we just clear up the fodder. Should be to note that high damage, if you want the highest DPS from uh, a distance, you uh, Precision Bolt Rocket Swap. If you want the highest damage up close, it is uh, Precision Bolt Super Shotgun Shot. The Ballista does more damage, however, it's longer to pull it out. The Heavy Cannon has one of the uh, fastest like, weapon swap animations, so we... The swapping back to it really uh, saves much time in terms of DPS. I have a whole damage document that goes over this. There is a lot to this game. Okay, now that everything's dead. You go to hit the button to clear the next room, but not before grabbing this respirator. So moving down, we grab a BFG ammo because that will save time a bit later. And we go here because this, because the DLC does have secret encounters, but instead of uh, instead of getting like combat rating or anything, we uh, instead get a cosmetic. But it is tracks, so we do have to get them. Keep swimming, keep swimming back. So, I guess I can talk a little bit about Hidden Combat Rating, which was the old system we used to judge 100% by. Hidden Combat Rating was uh, basically uh, encounters were tracked in RAM values. Well, if you opened up console, you would see that 
in combat rating would appear, being like, ah, a big encounter cleared or whatnot. Hold on, before we do this, I'm going to BFG. Look down in order to get uh, the pain elemental spawn in a bit sooner. Really, really saves a bit of time there. And then there is this Baron that we have to kill. So yeah, hidden combat rating now that we're clearing up fodder. Basically, the console being like, oh man, big eight combat encounter completed. completed. So then we just we're like, okay, every time a fight is registered in console, that's the that's what we're going to use to determine whether or not a, a fight has completed. We had this great tool and everything, but it had some issues where seemingly encounters that feel like they should have been included were excluded, which we just kind of dealt with. And then the straw that broke the camel's back was that a Easter egg encounter in World Spear, the DLC 2, uh, turns out that if you did the hidden combat rating method of tracking fights, that Mara the Easter egg encounter was included. It was a required fight in 100%. And we as a community were just like, okay, that's a that's a bit too much. If an optional Easter egg encounter that wasn't even found for a couple months after release of the second DLC was was included, then like it's just probably not a good system. So we're currently in the process of revamping it. So yeah. If ESA submissions, I'm just saying, were like a, a week or more later, we would probably write, be writing the official rules, but I'm running an approximation of what the rules will be at this point. The okay. So, instead of doing this little puzzle, we are just going to dash boost up to here. There's a few marauders included here. Take care of them quickly. Get these turrets, which were added exclusively to the DLC. Okay, there should be a button. And now, here's the area where all the game's journalists love. It's the double marauder encounter, where they throw not one, but two marauders at you. Gonna see if I can deal with them in a way. Okay, that's one down. Okay, the second Marauder was a bit eh, but like it was close enough. That was actually pretty good. I'll take that any day. Because the Marauder did not dance around me for too long. So after killing the Cybermac, this Arachnatron getting a chainsaw here. Destroyer blading to clear up the rest of the heavies. EFG to clear the wave after because this wave's too long. And now we are into the final parts of this wave. Where there's a Baron that spawns. We line it up so that we can destroyer blade him as he spawns, killing a carcass as well. Another Baron spawns that we just have to shoot to death. Chain sign to refill ammo because we are shooting a lot of things to death. Carcass is dead. Now we just have to clear the fodder. And we are out of here. Woo! And that's where the tightly optimized combat ends. Just kidding. We have blood swamps after this, which is a pretty good, pretty. It's it's a it's an eh level. It's, it's one of my favorite levels, but combat for it is pretty nice. That split, though? Yeah, just, just don't compare me to the world record holder. I know I'm a minute or two behind. Here. Oh, wait. That split it on the hemoglobin marsh. Hold on. It accidentally split twice there. That's fine. Oh, wait. What happens is that... Oh, uh, yeah. 
Okay, hold on. Skip this. There we are. They can't use that split. Minus 33 doesn't count. It accidentally split one more time, Chaco. Unfortunate. I can't keep that split. Oh no. I uh, see your mission objective states that you're going to destroy the sphere, not retrieve it. We skip all these enemies. That is not, sir, what Dr. Hayden, the, uh, the Seraphim, has requested of us. Uh, you... Oh. Hey, Doc, please. Sometimes the Marauder AI can trigger on enemy fire rather than you, and that's exactly what happens here. Okay, let's just go over here. Bless the barely missed there. Oh yeah, uh, grenades. Grenades are kind of important. I don't have any extra lives here, so this is actually kind of scary. Talk about scary. Uh, no, Chaco, I'm just not including the split for, um, for the marathon submission. So yeah, that Marauder just didn't play nice whatsoever. That happens a few times. Imagine doing this in a category on Ultra Nightmare just to get that. It's happened a few times. It's important to note here, there's not many extra lives for safety on Tag 1, so if I F up, it's actually kind of serious. But luckily, that's not too bad of a spawn location. Climb a tree, get out of here. Avoid the Cybermank, because the Cybermank is stupid. Nobody likes a Cybermank. We are out of here. So we wait for this Baron spawn. Luckily there's an extra life right here for us to use. So we got it, we got our safety net, let's go. So, uh, I guess update lore-wise, uh, we found the Seraphim. Turns out it was Samuel Hayden's just body that he yeah, left and took up a robot to form. Tomb, which so now what we're going to do is we're so trying to get the life spheres of altar. both the father, is the origin of, the father's realm. of the father, so that we can resurrect him effectively. And we are out of here. Doing a bit of traversal. We come here to we have the best marauder in the whole game. You'll see why. Look at this marauder. He gets stuck in the wall by doing that same energy shield strat. So uh yeah. I mean the game doesn't like it being in a wall, so it just kills it, which I mean I don't get it. That's mercy at that point. So after punching the box, moving on, we're actually already introduced to something new in this DLC, Spirits. Spirits work as basically they possess an enemy, the enemy cannot fault be faltered, and also uh, they get damage resistance and deal more damage. They're basically like a buff totem, except they also give them damage resistance, but only for one creature, which is actually great. Oh, there's also a big tentacle here. Uh, they also add big tentacles, big tentacles, because of course they do. Why not? We are out of here after that. Now there's a possessed Arachnatron here, which you can see will take way more rockets than a typical Arachnatron will. Also, uh, his buddy will help him out there. Uh, we didn't weren't able to get the cutscene skip because I was too good and killed things too quickly. But uh, normally you can't skip this cutscene with a trick by keeping it alive. A 
Okay, moving on. We're gonna hit this button. We have a bit of downtime before the jump pad activates, so I use this to get a chainsaw. Okay, there's two invisible whiplashes, because whiplashes weren't hated enough. So they decided to make them invisible in the DLC. Okay. Get another chainsaw, because we're going to need a bunch of ammo coming up. Whee! And we get stuck on some geometry, it's fine. It's calculated. Invisible walls, they exist everywhere. So we're gonna kill these enemies with a few lock-ons, hit this button. But wait, we have to backtrack for a secret encounter here. Which we're gonna do a quick strat of... Jumping underneath the platform. I found that, it's cool. So I'm doing it, okay. Okay, this secret encounter, the, the the way we do the secret encounter is just to shorter blade everything. Oh. By destroyer blade everything, I mean uh, miss a whiplash and have to do this casually. That happens sometimes. You can see this imp realizing what's about to happen. He didn't like it. Now we're going to do a great version of cut speed in combination with ballistic boosts right here. That was close. Oof. F it, it up slightly. Collision there can be a bit wonky, but hey, we got to try it again. That was what was supposed to happen, except with the cut speed. Pick everyone just be like, oh man, that was cool. If only you got it the first time. Speaking of which, dash resets. Kind of weird. That was a weird meat hook, too. Everything that's weird is happening, is what I'm saying. So we go back here. Cut speed super smooth. Yeah, that's my favorite cut speed in the game. Just because you use that in combination with a Ballista Boost to skip, like, that whole trial. Okay, here we got a trial, which basically we want to revive the father, but in order to revive the father, you have to prove your worth. So, of course, that means a bunch of combat. It's Doom. There's a few buff totems, but we're going to kill some trigger enemies first before we destroy it. And we killed so many trigger enemies that actually uh, another buff totem spawned. And now, here's what we call shoot everything to death section of the run. Because we shoot everything to death. Because they just throw all the ultra heavies at you, and you just have to freaking pray. Okay. And by pray, I mean shoot a bunch. chainsaw here, because it's, there's so much going on in this encounter, you have to do it halfway. Oop. And everything's dead. Now everything's dead. We're good. Oh, never mind. One gargoyle. Two gargoyles, actually. There's another. There's always one hiding, and like in speedruns, it's the most frustrating thing. Ah, see? It was right where I needed him to be, too. So we completed the trial. We get the shield. Let's go. Destroying Blade here. Uh, very important to Destroyer Blade here and kill these enemies, they don't despawn. So in order to keep spawn limit low, we, uh, keep them. We just kill them. Because of course. Oops. 
Cyber Mantibus tries his best Kool-Aid impression and gets completely owned by a chainsaw. Of course, as it goes. Here's the first gimmicky encounter where, like, we have to follow the dog and then there's fog around us, but he's the safe zone. If anyone's played that one quest from The Witcher 3, it's basically that in Doom. Okay, the whip, Whiplash should have spawned. Lock them on. There's another Whiplash coming. Lock him on. And then there's some Hell Knights. And they're dead. There's sometimes an imp in the invisible mist, but you can't ever see it. Too far, it's too thick of a fog. Okay, these guys dead, that brings in the next wave. Get a chainsaw off here while the counter ends, and we're good. Yo, Arish, thank you for the follow. Okay. Last encounter. This is the MLG encounter because you literally, the optimal strat is precision bolting and headshotting each of these shoulders. And if you miss, that happens. That's what happens when you aren't MLG enough. This is what happens when Phase Clan disowns you. didn't die. Yeah. That's Baron of the Year. That Baron really just wanted to live. Alright, and now we're gonna finish it off with the last safe area, aka what's best to fight in a close encounter? You're thinking id, you're thinking Marauder. So, we've gotta take on a Marauder. Okay, now that we do that, we hit the button, and we have to backtrack a little bit in order to get a secret encounter, uh, get a secret encounter unlocked. Because this is 100%, we'll have to grab that. Okay. Doing everything. Also, this Book of the Seraphs, which is lore. Trying to charge up a good B-Hop here. Uh, B-Hops. B-Hops are a bit frame rate dependent. So, uh, they're also kind of inconsistent, so you can just have it several times to where B-Hop just doesn't decide to work even though you want it to. Secret encounter complete, let's go. Using an ice bomb to uh, freeze both the Kako and the Baron so that, you know, they stick near the same place, so rocket splash damage can clean one of them up. If there are a group of enemies, uh, rocket... TV rocket is actually more damage, because splash damage to enemies is insane. Okay, here we're gonna skip some platforming by Ballista Boosting. So we got some enemies that we need to take care of. So that we can continue on. Here we're gonna see some possessed uh, Hell Knights. However, if you do this properly, no Hell Knights are spawned. No Hell Knights are spawned in possessed. This is because of spawn limit mentioned area later. We didn't kill everything, so some so sometimes that doesn't spawn in. Here we're gonna do precise BFG. Hopefully kill a Baron and severely damage this one. And we get it, let's go. Couple revenants spawn. Gonna line up a destroyer blade. Ah, the revenants didn't give me good. Okay, we're a bit at spawn limit because uh, those revenants didn't spawn in. Here, I'm gonna ice bomb this Arachnotron because that normally spawns in with the spirit, but if you ice bomb it right away, it won't always spawn in, which that's good, it didn't. Then it's two um, Arachnotrons. Chainsaw, because we have to wait for an arc file to spawn, which not even not spawn because of spawn limit, so we're gonna have to kill a few enemies. 
Okay, we killed a few enemies. That means the Archvial spawn. We're good. Okay, next is the Doom Hunter, but we have a few Blood Punches prepared for it. Specialty. And there should be an Archvial that spawns, but probably didn't because of spawn limit shenanigans, which is known to happen on this map. So we just gotta kill a few enemies and hope that's a spawn limit. There we are. It's dead. We are good now. So yeah, that was, that's one tricky thing that we try to keep down. Some enemies must have lived, uh, must have not taken some, uh, must not have died when I did a destroyer blade earlier. <laughs> Typically how it goes. Okay, moving on. We have the box fights. You know how we punch box to skip the box in the beginning of Hell and Earth? Well, it's mad. It's gonna enact its revenge. So the optimal strat for doing this is to meat hook off of enemies, to guarantee that like you can't take damage because you're above them, and then to PV ballista each eye. So we're just gonna do that for a bit. This probably is quite boring after you see it once, so probably a good spot for donations as well. Okay, now it did the classic thing of we fought two of them, but now how about we fight two of them at once? Ooh. Not the, the second time this game has pulled this trick or anything. We are out of Blood Marshes, and we are back into the Holt. Yes, the Den of Honors. Where, turns out, the story is is that we didn't take the Father's Sphere. Instead, we took the Dark Lord's Sphere. Why did we take the Dark Lord's Sphere? Because the Dark Lord is a demon. He's the, like the king of the demons. He's like the father version of the demons. So we, we want him dead. So we're going to revive him just to kill him. These are called Blood Makers. They're basically like those Maker Drones, except they uh, require a counter window in order to kill them, to where you can then successfully headshot them, and they will drop some health and ammo. There are a few manipulations, like if you see, saw the first Blood Maker, I positioned myself accordingly to uh, make sure that it instantly gave me the opening window. However, the second one can be a bit trickier, uh, especially because you have to go directly from here. Here I'm gonna ice bomb a Cybermag so that it doesn't get possessed, and so that this Hell Knight gets possessed instead, which is just better overall. Also, to kill possessed, you have to microwave beam it. Everyone loves this mechanic. Everyone loves being forced to use the meme beam. In case you don't know, it's called meme beam. In the community, because we have a sense of humor. So now some whiplashes will spawn. We'll kill them. But oh, this Bloodmaker came early. That's actually pretty good. Uh, where is this second whiplash, though? He should have... Was this AI behaving weird? Oh. He was behind me the whole time. Normally, he, like, drops down over to your right, but he didn't there. Thing, with so many enemies, you kind of have to rely on enemy AI at, at points, because you can't kill them all right as they spawn, and it's not the best. And normally you like trying to get the Marauder one cycle, which is Ballista, Rockets, and a few Grenades. However, he wasn't playing nice and he got caught on a few enemies, so I just had to kill the Tyrant first. So he's dead, that's cool. There's no Maker Drone, so I have to Chainsaw here. Maker drones are a great supply of ammo, and when you don't have them, well, frick, you're just kind of screwed. You just gotta. This uh, this platforming trick is being a bit weird. I'm gonna just do the backup and grab that ledge. You you're not supposed to be able to grab that ledge. However, there is one part where you can kind of shimmy up 
and I guess I was just barely missing it the whole time. Here we got a secret encounter where we are treated by a possessed Arachnatron. So we are obviously just going to just spam it with rockets to kill it because we just need a lot of damage on it. Barely missing. Okay, now we're on to this area. Normally, there's an Arachnatron here that spawns with a spirit, but we're going to Ice Bomb it real quick. And move on to the Slayer Gate. Uh, don't tell me by just... By just pure luck, the spirit possessed the other Arachnatron, which is actually kind of bad. It deals a lot of damage that can hit you during the Slayer Gate transition. But if we didn't, we got lucky. Let's go. Not punish. Here, there's Hell Knight and a Bloodmaker. Bloodmakers are hated in Doom Eternal because they provide a lot of stun. They will stun you pretty hard if you let them hit you. So it's important to prioritize them whenever they give you the counter window. But however, waiting for the counter window is slow, so you want to kill things. That makes it difficult. Balance of give and take. This is the worst Slayer Gate in the game because there is a Possessed Marauder in here. A Marauder that deals more damage and is also takes damage resistance. We got a strat to deal with it. Let's hope it works. BFG as it spawns. And the Broader dies. Let's go. That is best case scenario right there. Okay, now we just gotta kill some uh, carcasses. And this, that shall be the end of this encounter. Pretty, pretty... You know, with how bad this Slayer Gate is, that was really good. Like, supremely good. Here, we grab this other one because it's the last one and we're required to pick it up. We're gonna energy shield pass here because that possessed Arachnatron is scary. Okay, Arachnatron missed all its shot. Let's go. Keep hooking off these echoes. Excuse me there, sir. And we are out of here. But first, we have to grab this. Okay. This should be good. I'm trying to get a death warp up there. No, nope, it's not. Okay. I was a bit too far away. Here we are. Here we are. Just barely making it. Just barely. We make it to this and we skip some parkour section. Uh, there's one imp here. Gotta wait. Kill this Dread Knight. There's another Dread Knight that spawns, but it took the other path. How dare it? It, it should have taken the other. I took a 50-50 chance on whether or not it would take the bottom path or the top path. Everything's dead. Hold on, there's a... Oh, we should be good just need to pick up this ammo on the way. Oop, and these cacos are dead. These cacos are dead. There's a pain elemental here. However, we don't want to deal with it. We're just going to chainsaw it in the face. And we're going to pick up a BFG because it spawns right next to it, which is pretty nice. Here we got the pillar room. Everyone hates the pillar room. There's a possessed hell knight. Gotta kill this guy. Everything just needs to die here, really. So once we kill the spirit, we can kill things fast enough to where the spirit can't possess them. And there should be some fodder just waiting. Worst part about the pillar room is cleaning up the fodder. The fodder just can so easily hide behind every player gate. Oh, by the way, thank you, Super Tech. I appreciate it. Okay, we're gonna Ballista Boost. All the way over here. Grab this collectible. And we are out of here. What? Huh? That's never happened to me before. 
the it's normally supposed to take you up to that platform but it didn't it it gave me downwards moment doom was just doom right there now you may notice we saved a bunch of bfg for this situation we're gonna bfg twice in this arena because this arena is typically very long so bfg here clean up some fog clean up some enemies wait for a few more of them to spawn bfg again We kept BFG removes the Bloodmakers and vulnerability, so we take that opportunity to get a good um, to get headshots on them. Here we manipulate a Bloodmaker to give us an ins a instant counter window, and now we just have to deal with a couple of Barons. I dashed through it. That probably could have been happened. Makes sense. Game is wonky at times. I didn't know it was possible either. That's why I was kind of was all right with dashing into it for it. And Potter cleanup. Now we have to go hit this button. Some doors like opening from further away than right next to them. So there's a button right here and look, oh man, a secret encounter. This is where the game tries to pull a practical joke at you and throws a Marauder and a Bloodmaker at you at the same time. Just says good luck. So we're just going to do that. Okay, this Marauder's not playing nice. Can you play nice, please? Okay. Marauders, when you... One cycles are very precise. That's just to say so precise that even... After speedrunning both DLCs and base game and trying all these strats, it's really, it's practically, at best, a, like, 30-70 chance you'll get it. It's, uh, it's really precise, and a lot of runners have opted to do, um, a different strat there, but I'm old with my ways. Here we have the best FU in the game, where they throw a possessed tyrant at you. So we saved the BFG just for this tyrant. And BFG still not big enough to kill a possessed tyrant, so we have a bunch of rockets here that we're just going to spam until it's dead. And woohoo, we did it. Here, we are in a it's kind of a gimmicky room, where it's just, um, if they just give you a bunch of energy ammo and just say go ham, so we are just going to use exclusively Destroyer Blade, the best energy weapon, and clean up this encounter, because it pierces shields and it also deals a ton of damage. And we don't have to shoot around them. Okay, and once we're done here, you have to do here to hit this button, because this unlocks a door that has a secret right over here. And then we can continue. And now we're coming up on the final boss fight. Now, Samuel Hayden, aka the Seraphim, aka Mr. Angel Dude, did not like how we just um, want to revive the Dark Lord to kill him. So he meet us here at the re revivification chamber to show us uh, that, hey, maybe we shouldn't do that. He's going to try to talk it out of us, but we ain't having any of it. Okay, we're going to BFG right before this cutscene, as this will kill the enemies during the cutscene. So now that the enemies are killed during the cutscene, we these spirits that normally possess them, we can just juggle them. And kill them that way. Or he kills Mr. Hate, Mr. Sammer. And now, this is actually my favorite boss fight in the game. However, this is the worst part of any boss fight. It's literally an auto scroller where there's just traps going off, and we have to. Um, we just have to survive until the next place. So yeah, if in a marathon setting, this would be a great part for donations. We basically, uh, I'm just going to 
pop sticky bombs in these Kako's mouths and farm them for armor. Because there's nothing better here to do, so might as well get some help. Actually, you know what, Frick it, I have an extra life. I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the big ball strat. Uh, there's a we got a rune called Desperate Punch, which basically when we are when we are at low health, we can uh we gain extra blood punch damage. So I'm gonna keep my health here low, and I'm going to go in close to Mr. Hayden, blood punch him twice. That did a bit of damage, and now we just have to um, finish him off. I'm trying to get a fire a D blade during this uh, cutscene to hit the the panel that spawned in. Deals a little bit of extra damage, and it's really nice. How much bliss ammo do I have? I can spare a couple marvelous shots. So now we just gotta kill these pain elementals and destroy the destroy the spirits. And that will be the boss fight. At this point I am looking for a fodder. Oh. Then I'm going to get micro missiles and I'm just going to shoot this dread knight to death. Hopefully it'll work. Of course that happens. And that is the end of t DLC 1 after we kill that last uh that last uh spirit there we are so I am going this and now we are on to DLC 2 the ancient gods part 2 ancient gods part 2 let's go last DLC we are almost done with the marathon. We are 20 minutes ahead at this point. Wow. It's been a while since I ran 100% plus DLC. I went to focus on the campaigns individually. That turns out well. So first things first. Gotta re-equip everything that we would like. Because uh, there's a default loadout. You cannot customize the loadout. Gonna just meet Hook over there. They actually realized how good meat hooking was, so they added some meat hook points for optimized traversal. So here we're just gonna focus here. Now this the now plot twist: the Dark Lord, the real Dark Lord, was the friends we made along the way. So in order to kill the friends we made along the way, we have to uh, basically uh, get a teleporter so that we can go to the heart of hell, to the ancient city of Amora, so that we can face the Dark Lord in one-on-one -on -one combat and kill him. First, we have to uh, get a few things so that we can teleport into the heart of hell, because believe it or not, heart of hell is not easy to get into. So here we're required to get like some sentinel crystal ripoff that's basically that will drive us to um, Amora. Here we got another close encounter gimmick. That's really fun. We kill these things. And we just have to make our way to this crystal that's held in this ancient uh, Sentinel City. Man, I feel like we've done this before with something maybe called the Crucible. Oh, you may notice, uh, fun fact, we don't have the Crucible anymore. At the end of the first campaign, we lost it because we plunged it into... Um, the Icon of Sin. Oh, also, DLC 2 introduces a new enemy. These are these Armored Barons, which you can either damage them to break their armor, or, or you can wait for a counter window and fire them. They're great because they almost always give you a counter window uh, when you first meet them. So they're the Marauder, but better. I'm trying to do a trick here to do a little bit of a sequence break. This is useful, as it cuts out a bit of movement. And because I messed, it's so it saves so little time actually, that uh, me messing it up there is actually slower. So just for a note, if you're wanting to speedrun this for yourself, you can completely skip that trick if you want. 
basically there's a monkey bar whose collision you can get to if you just precisely angle yourself facing away from it and you will grab it through an invisible wall here we are strapped for ammo so we're just going to destroy our blade a few chunks And after we've killed a few, we'll chainsaw to recoup some of that lost ammo and go onward. Now, because we sequence broke, collision's a bit wonky, so we have to ballista boost on top of a building in order to continue. Okay, here's the next arena. Basically, there's a bunch of fodder here. We kill the fodder as fast as possible until two whiplashes spawn, and then that's the, that is the final wave. So we got the whiplash to spawn, we charge the destroyer blade, kill both of them. And everything's dead, we can continue on to the next part, which is this Hell Knight right here. They're just like, ah ha ha, funny, you should be uh, in a cramped room with a bunch of Hell Knights, and that's what happens. We got a Dread Knight that we can kill, or we can just let him be. Really, killer's choice. We're gonna detour right here to pick up the BFG. Oh, how is he alive? Oh, come on. Ballista boost out of here. And we are going. Oh. Cool. Saved. Calculated. That was actually pretty good of a save. I just, uh... Some, the meat hook physics for the meat hook points are a bit different, so uh, it's really good to just, um, so it could really mess with your muscle memory of years of, of a, you know, a year of playing this game, used to meat hooking off enemies. Okay, we have a purple goo. This arena sucks casually, because the purple goo just restricts your movement. So what we do is we just stand outside the, the purple goo and accept that we will be, uh, taking constant damage, it's cool because we get our mobility, and mobility is super nice. Also, I guess another enemy to mention, in that encounter there was this enemy called the Screecher, which is if you damage it, it will just um, instantly uh, let out a scream and buff all nearby enemies so that they uh, deal more damage and they take half damage. I'm detecting an energy signature from Commander Valor. Okay, here's the real gimmick of DLC 2. We have a new toy called the Sentinel Hammer. The Sentinel Hammer, it recharges whenever you destroy a weak point or get a glory kill. You need two charges for the hammer. And this adds a lot of depth into Tag 2, personally. Uh, like right here, I want to make sure to destroy one weak point so that I can have a hammer fully charged by the end of this encounter. Then we'll BFG. There'll be a Possessor Rakutron that spawns here, but we'll get it before it spawns. And after destroying another weak point, we have a fully charged hammer. What does the hammer do? The hammer stuns enemies, as you'll see here. We will use it against one of these tyrants. So just hold on a sec. So there should be a tyrant, like, right over here. See, this tyrant is stunned. It also, the hammer gives you ammo and health when hammering something. So it's basically like the chainsaw, but it's all for one stop. It, Hammer gives you everything. Uh, getting Hammer Charge is a big part of this route. Because there are a few enemies with specific weaknesses for it. Like, for instance, coming up here are these Stone Nips, Which are super effective. Which, it is very easy to kill them with uh, a Hammer or full auto shotgun. However, it is faster to take your Chain Gun Shield and push it into their face. And while the shield, Chain Gun Shield is recharging, we just do we, we Hammer and we Rinse and Repeat. You do need a chainsaw at the end of this, and you can chainsaw the stone in. Now, why does the chain gun shield instantly do that? We are pretty sure it's a pretty big bug. And, uh, they patched it server-side, so if you disable your internet connection from Bethesda, well, just from the inter- if you, if you, uh, if you disable your game's internet connection, you can just instantly, uh, do that at home. Up until they current patch it. So do it while do it quick. 
here there's a few stone imps. You're gonna need to kill these stone imps and then kill these dread knights. Making sure to get these arachnitron turrets because they're scary. And then we get a free hammer here so that we can just recoup some of our ammo. And we have enough ammo for this cool skip right here, which I will ballista boost. We almost got it. Damn. I actually got too much speed there, which is an issue. So here. And then if you do this correctly, you can get right up to here. Um, only with that ballista boost. Okay. Now, moving on to this area. Which reminds me. Wait. Am I running this on Ultra Nightmare? Game. I think I'm running this on Ultra Nightmare by mistake. Because there's normally two lives there. Uh, whoops. I better not die, I guess. <laughs> well, that's a weird way to do this marathon submission. Okay, now, that, now there's actually some pressure here. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, oops. So here we're trapped. I'm actually on UN. This is There's normally extra lives there that you can tell if you're on Nightmare, but they're not there, so um you know, we're just gonna Worst case scenario, if I die, I can load a save file, but I don't want to do that. What the Okay, people. Well, the stakes just got a little bit more, uh... Uh, let's just say drastic. Yeah, well, I called that. Well. I got... Here, let me load a save file. <laughs> the timing, I noticed. Hold on, I'm gonna load a save file. Oh, hey, hey, I, I, I just got back to the same place with the save file, and we're just going to pick it up. That didn't happen, okay? So, yeah, because it's a save file, I don't have everything quite exactly where I want to, so I don't have blood punch. I was supposed to blood punch here, but it's cool. Somebody, whoever commentates for me, has to has to remind me not to select Ultra Nightmare by mistake. That's gotta be a meme now. Does this affect my submission? I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna say, frick, whatever. I just reload save file, go from there. It's cool. I'm pretty sure people will understand if you just misclick. Okay, BFG to finish off this fight so that it clears everything. Although there's one imp who survived the BFG. There's always one. Should be cool. So these are escalation encounters. I get sorry, I was a bit. I was a bit flabbergasted from accidentally doing something stupid, but yeah, Escalation Encounters are basically Slayer Gates. You're required to do them to do one, but the second one is harder. Here I'm doing a little manipulation strat that I found that will get all the aerial enemies uh, close to you. Turns out if you're bu if you if you are beneath that uh, that little patio. They'll just all come to you, and they'll all group up, so Ballista Shot will deal splash damage to everything. A little cool thing. We can Glory Kill here. Normally it's slow, but however, you do have to wait for some Hell Knights to get here, so... Actually, Glory Killing is time neutral. Also, we Glory Kill here, just because, uh... We have to... Glory kill. We have to deal with some Cybermax. They're weak to Blood Punch. So it's 
overall worth it to glory kill. Now a few arch files will spawn here. Go deal with them. And I'm going to hammer this one for more ammo. And also because it stuns. Chainsaw here. And you get... Now two tyrants spawn. We use this opportunity to b-hop to them. Throw a destroyer blade. Hammer one of these tyrants. Because we're on our way here. We have some... Now if you notice, there's a ha uh, hammer pickup. I accidentally picked up the hammer pickup. That's cool though. Normally there's a hammer pickup I like to wrap there so I can uh, hammer one of these Doom Hunters, but it's okay. That's like a couple seconds time loss. Imp improvisational skills are important in Doom Eternal for if things don't go completely to plan. Now we're good. Okay, we are out of here. Now we still have a couple arenas left. There's a bunch of enemies that we that we have right here that we actually don't have to face because nothing blocks our progress. Okay, we got some blood makers here. I'm gonna be trying to do some blood maker manipulations. That if I throw my head in the tr in those little leaves, blood maker instantly manips. If I stand in this corner, blood maker instantly manips, and I'm going to go back and forth twice with that. Ah, didn't get it. I'm going to do the backup manip, where if you uh, get them to do a ground attack, they will most likely do uh, an attack after. Okay. Manip didn't work the, sec the fourth time either, but hey, they're... Game is wonky. You have to kill everything here because they progress off. What's it? Our progress is halted until we kill everything. Normally, you can meat hook off this. This hasn't happened before, actually. Normally, that that's green? Doom was just Doom, people. We're not going to talk about that. I have never seen that before, actually. That always turns green. See, the great thing if you're running DLC, you could just reset if something like that happens. But if you're running like this, it's a marathon. You gotta just endure. And with this, we are out of here after we grab this Sentinel. Totally not a Sentinel Crystal. So now that we have a beacon that can hold us onto Amora, we have to get a teleporter that can get us to Amora. So this teleporter is, turns out, it's on Earth. There's, in an abandoned city, there is this teleporter, because I don't know Doom Universe logic, but, like, apparently it's supposed to be here. Okay. Also, we get to hear some of the banger music. Reclaimed Earth probably has the best OST in this DLC, just saying. Okay, we have a Blood Punch. It's for the Cybermech. After we kill this Kako, and also this Hell Knight, there are some uh, things that spawn. So we get up a Destroyer Blade. Okay, there's a Cursed Prowler. Cursed Prowlers are really bad because uh, when they spawn in, if they hit you, they basically restrict your mobility and uh, until you find them and blood punch them. And you can think about how uh, that would be bad because in a speedrun, when it's stopping you so that you have to go and blood punch it. Here we will hammer, stun everything, and we will destroy or blade everything here. 
trying to maxi maximize damage. Okay, this guy just needs to die. And then this man just is dead, and then this should just be fodder. And we should be able to get out of here. I don't have enough ballista ammo to do a trick, so we're just going to do the plug strat of the casual way. Kind of how that last arena is, you will probably use a bunch of ballista. You could, well, you have the possibility of using a bunch of ballista ammo because you e blade is just so strong in there. In so Power ballista ammo can be a bit unreliable you depending on the RNG spawns and whatnot. Now. Okay, we clear that enemy area. We are moving on to the shoulders, which have a shield that cannot be destroyed, so you have to shoot around them. Out of all the enemies they added, I kind of like this one the best. Hold on, wait. Oop, you go here. Now you do a Ballista Boost. B-Hop, Ballista Boost again. And you can make it all the way, skipping all those Meat Hook nodes. Pretty fast. A bit fast. Here we got a really cool strat coming up for this Escalation Encounter. So first, we gotta take care of these Mankibai. Oh, Dread Knight's over there. That's actually perfect. After dealing with this Dread Knight, everything else spawns in. And we will try to position ourselves in a precise spot. BFG. And the area is over. What happened there is a Marauder was supposed to spawn in. But, because we stand exactly where the Marauder spawns in, it can't spawn in. So the counter just clears. I love that strat. Okay, now that we've killed a few things, we're going to BFG to clear this wave. And next thing, a Cursed Prowler should spawn here. Looks like we can get a free glory kill. We're waiting for things to spawn. Archvial. Just take care of this Archvial real quick. Now a Cursed Hell Knight will spawn. And we will destroy this real quick. Okay, these Marauders and Doom Hunters played really nice because uh, they they gave they they were close to each other, but not close enough to where they could both damage me, but I could both hammer them. There's another gargoyle somewhere. Otter is like the worst part of these runs. There's always one or two gargoyles or imps that will hide from you. If you become a speedrunner of this game, you'll just learn to hate them. Because they don't they just hide in a corner, making you waste precious Attention seconds. Okay, and we're out of here. That's just a, basically like a little stress reliever after that big escalation encounter. They just give you a hammer and say, go nuts. Coming. We are dealing with an exclusive, exclusive thing in this game, which is a possessed pinky, which is just as fun as it sounds. So, go here. Blood punch twice. And that hopefully gets the pinky in stagger. If it doesn't, like, eh, tough, tough luck there, buddy. Here's another encounter that we can skip by a, a pretty cool jump. What we'll do is we'll meat hook, double ballista boost, and we are up here. Encounter completely avoided. Oh, come on, jump up. 
Now that we do this, we kill the Dread Knight, and then our favorite friends, the Armored Baron, will come. Gotta wait for him. And everything's gone. We can continue on. Now, don't ask me why one of the most difficult combat uh, sections in the game, you know, in the second DLC, is on Earth, which we just, uh, which we just, like, uh, saved. So, shouldn't demons be, like, demons' population be pretty low here? And, like, you'd be right. I wonder that. I don't get the logic, but, you know, game, you'll be good. It's good game. It's good combat. We'll forgive the lore inconsistency. Okay, now here's another uh, encounter with our friends, the Screechers. We will basically do a precise deplay to not hit a Screecher and kill everything at once. Same thing, and then we just precision take out these Hell Knights. Here's the last encounter of the this second DLC. I'm gonna get a chainsaw before this because ammo is pretty scarce. Get a gory kill, charge blood punch once. And then, oh, he didn't stun from the hammer. That's weird. Normally does. Must have been like a weird animation or something. Oh, there's the Hell Knight. I was waiting for you, buddy. Was looking for the Cursed Prowler. Now that I found the Cursed Prowler, we can just easily kill these. There is this Baron of Hell, and then we're going to do a cool BFG strat to finish out the encounter here. After we get some ammo, there's a Possessed Mancubus that we need to kill. After he's dead, an Archfile will spawn, and we'll BFG to kill everything plus the Archfile. Okay, uh, BFG didn't go according to plan there, but I think it was good enough. Sometimes a wall just happens, happens to be there. It's cool. And we outie. Now, we are going to the lost city of Amora. Now, Amora has a lot of fun combat. It also has a lot of soft locks, so we gotta try to do our best here. To not experience them, although some of them are completely RNG. So we Ballista Boost here to get just some sick movement. In order to get to our first encounter, these Escalation Encounters. All that is just literally a track that you can run up, so we skip it. Where these guys get perfectly lined up. Story Blade strats reign supreme in DLC 2, just for the record. If you want to be good in a speedrun for Tag 2, you want to basically be able to use your Destroyer Blade effectively. So, we're trying to kill these. Uh, what flashes before I go on to the second Doom Hunter? Wait. He wasn't spawned in, but then he spawned in. That's strange. Normally, as soon as that Doom Hunter dies, he, uh... Oh, the Doom Hunter wasn't dead? This Doom Hunter is living through very extraordinary circumstances. Okay. So now we just kite these enemies while alpha rotating them in the face. And all these enemies are dead. Rats. And that's the first escalation counter, just D Blade Central. Here. We go on to the second escalation encounter, which is actually probably actually a bit easier than the first. So first, we're gonna take this downtime while things are swinging. Grab BFG. 
A possessed Baron will show up, and we are going to deal with it. And then another regular Baron. <laughs> you know, it's not a run without at least one BFG crash. Yeah, yeah, for people who don't know, the game just has a random chance to crash whenever you fire the BFG. We were very good up until now. And then that happened. When the BFG crashes, you're just sent back to the last checkpoint, and you're gonna have to reload. It's unfortunate. We'll just have to do that beginning section again. So yeah, after we kill both Barons, we BFG basically clear out everything. Possibly kill a Marauder, because killing a Marauder would be nice. Okay. There should be a Baron coming. There you are. Oh, they killed the Marauder. Let's go. The Tyrants don't spawn in unless that Marauder is dead. That means the BFG killed it. We are good to go. Oh, we're getting a bit low here, so I'm going to take a break. Grab this, and some health. Oh. Enemy fire is getting... Enemy fire is preventing uh, the Marauder from giving me their opening window. Great thing about the hammer is that you can extend the Marauder's uh, stun window so you can one-cycle him makes it really fun with a uh, tag 2 dealing with marauders because you don't have to rely on inconsistent one cycles if you don't want to okay now that we haven't crashed and we can continue let's keep her going okay because i'm a bit low i'm grabbing these extra lives for safety I was going without extra lives for a little bit there, and that would have been bad. Keep up the pace, you know. This encounter is pretty simple. It's just a few Mancubi and a few uh, Hell Knight. Okay, dealing with these, it's just a couple pain elementals, no big deal, and a stone in. Deals shield soldiers, but with a couple precise grenades, or maybe even one, they're dead. Okay. There's a couple turrets here. Gonna take get one shot on them now, and then deal with this uh, possessed hell knight. Now that that's all done, we get fired through a cannon. Hello? Okay, I guess it just didn't want to go for a second. Now we're in the advanced part of hell. Sci-fi hell. Hey, Bloodshot. Thanks for the raid, dude. We're finishing up my marathon uh, submission, so I'm going to be commentating the whole run. Welcome, everybody. So, we do the meat hook of destiny. Get to this platform. And there is... A Marauder fight that we have to do. So we just do the simple... Just Marauder... Just uh, Alpha Rotation them. Now unfortunately, yeah, since I didn't have Hammer, I'll have to farm another Hammer here. Fine. For the Marauder to come. Marauder! Who cares if he's possessed? You can still one-cycle him. The great thing about the hammer, you can do enough damage to one-cycle him even through a streaker stream. Okay, now... 
we're at the fun part where this where we're go we got to start talking about soft locks. Woo! So we have to. Uh, there's a few reasons about spawn limit that we have to uh, basically kill a lot of these enemies. In fact, in, to ensure that we don't reach spawn limit, we will BFG at the end of this fight. So after this button becomes available and the next enemy wave spawns in, we will practically... Uh, so we'll kill these things. And then BFG to kill every enemy out here, because they don't despawn when you're, uh, when you go, when you advance forward. Grab a BFG here. These enemies don't spawn either, so you want to make sure they're dead, or at least a couple of them, so that you're not at spawn limit rip, limits. Spawn limit limits, yes. So, killing this, killing these things. So we're going to try to instantly kill this cursed prowler because uh, we don't want to get hit by a cursed prowler. Now there should be one Bloodmaker here that we have to kill to push across the wave. There's the Bloodmaker. Can you give me the opening window please? Green light? You just have to say green light and then they'll give you the green light. Okay, possess Baron here. You just have to rocket it down. And then we're practically done with this encounter. Up, oh, doing this for safety. I'm low health. Okay, after we killed this one Mecha Baron. BFG, and that clears the encounter. There might be one imp surviving or something. This is, there we are. There was one surviving. We found him, though. Okay, cool. Now, there's a... Now, you're normally supposed to deal with a lot more stone imps here. However, if you kill all of them at once, it ends the encounter early. So that's what we do. And I skipped something. Oh, that might have been because of the crash, actually. Yeah, it was probably there. We are fine, people. All right, now we are on to the final boss fight, the Dark Lord. Which, of course, the Dark Lord, final boss of Doom Eternal, is, of course, a glorified boss marauder. So we just gotta wait for him to give us the green light. And then we just uh, super shotgun PB him, because it's the highest damaging output we have at uh, at close range. So that's what we're gonna do. So we just stand at mid range, wait for him to give him green light, and then we fire super shotgun PB. The next phase there's a one cycle for, which I'll just let that speak for itself when we do that. And he's really not letting us get, get a green light. He really doesn't like me. So now that we have this phase down, we're on to the phase with this one cycle, which has a very precise weapon set up in order to uh, kill this guy in one phase. Just need one green light. Okay, then we lock on. And we one cycled him effectively. So we're going to try it again, as you can one cycle them in both these phases, but not the other phases. Boop. And then lock on, and blood punches. Up. Oh. He slammed me right after, so I couldn't uh, get him. So we'll have to wait for one more green light. No one cycle, but it's fine. Okay, now we're in the final two phases where we basically just have to wait for green lights. Great boss fight. We can't be proactive, we can't get damage in by doing something else, we just have to wait for him to green light. So you know how, like, the gladiator, how we could damage him during the other phases, which kind of made him, like, a fun and interesting boss fight, that you can play the counter windows or you could play damage for a round. If you literally damage him outside his counter window, he will heal. 
So yeah, unless he's like this close to where we can just uh, deal enough burst damage to where we damage him before he heals. Which didn't work, ah uh, man. Unfortunate. So we will have to just charge another hammer and just go at it again. Fortunately, he did not play nice there. Just gotta wait for that. Here, I'm just gonna hammer just to get rid of his summons, because he can summon other creatures. They're just bad to deal with. Okay, we got that phase down. Last phase is exactly the same as the last. Wait for the green light. Oh. Did he just blindside me? <laughs> I haven't seen that happen in a long time. He can sometimes- he's, he doesn't attack you when you're looking away and are far away, supposedly, but sometimes he breaks that rule. Okay, there, he gave me another counter window, but I didn't have another hammer, so I couldn't capitalize on it. He does that sometimes. Oh, and there we go. We can finish this boss fight. Let's go. And there we go. Finishing off the run. 346-10. My god. That's definitely faster than I have ever done it before. What's my PB? My PB... Beat my PB by 18 minutes. Shows to go that uh, practicing the individual campaign does good. So yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I'll hopefully see you at a marathon? Who knows? But yeah. There's the, he'll say no or something, and then like he'll die. Like, cool. I guess we can watch it, sure. And this was a bunch of stupid stuff, but like, hey, it's cool. Did it. For people who don't... Oh, Eris wants to say hi. Say hi to the Kit Kat. Okay. You'll just fall. <laughs>